offensive lineman at NC State, and that is senior left tackle Rob Crisp, who is out with an injury. What does that mean? Well, that means there's a new face of the position, but a guy who's played just about every position. Joe Tooney's played center, right guard, right tackle, but never left tackle. I talked to offensive coordinator Matt Canada just a few minutes before the game. He said he had to teach him how to play the position this week. So in week one of learning the position of left tackle, he's got to, of course, protect Pete Thomas's blind side against number three, Vic Beasley, Reese. That's, that's quite the task for him. It is indeed, Sam. Vic Beasley, an extraordinary pass rusher. And Tooney just learned a left-handed stance three days ago. There is North Carolina State head coach Dave Doran, his first year at Northern Illinois last year, led the Huskies to the Orange Bowl, though did not coach in it. Doran has never lost a game at home as a head coach. 14-0 at home as a head coach. He'll try to continue that tonight against William Christopher Swinney. They call him Dabo in his fifth full season as a Tigers head coach. 42 and 21, won an ACC championship a couple of years ago and as the Tigers ranked third in the country. North Carolina State won the toss, but they deferred, so the Tigers will get it first. Nicholas Sadie is going to kick it off. Jamon Hopper, one of the guys back deep for the Tigers to return, along with Roderick McDowell. We'll see a lot of Roderick tonight. He is the starting running back for the Tigers. Sadie about set to go, and we're underway in the ACC from Raleigh. Glad to have you with us on a Thursday night. Ought to be a good one. As Hopper and McDowell will keep it in the end zone. McDowell will make the catch, and the Tigers will start at the 25-yard line. Here is Taj Boyd, the Heisman Trophy candidate at quarterback for Clemson. He's had a good start to his season, three touchdowns and no interceptions. For his career, he's thrown for nearly 8,500 yards, and with his next touchdown pass, he will pass Russell Wilson, for second place on the ACC's all-time touchdown list. He's thrown 76 in his career. This is an explosive Clemson offense directed by Offensive coordinator Chad Morris will see them do a lot of different things, including letting Taj Boyd run. It's a pickup of about three on first down. When the Tigers have the ball, here are the impact players, and there are plenty of them. Sammy Watkins and Roderick McDowell filling in for Andre Ellington after his departure last year, and Art Norman and Thomas Teal on the defensive front. That is the strength of this entire North Carolina State team. And the front have an effect on Boyd. They can't stop him from getting a first down. Two plays and two carries as Boyd gets together in a little pleasantries with Jarvis Bird. Right away, first two plays, you've seen Clemson's willingness to run the football with the quarterback. An added element dimension in Chad Morris's offense. Boyd kept it, has to throw it away. Is getting some pressure. A couple of guys back there, Daryl Cato Bishop was the first guy to get in Taj's face. And obviously this is going to be the key for NC State. Can they continue to apply pressure? It's a run look, play action. They get in the backfield. The strength of this Wolfpack defense is their defensive line. Can they play on the other side of the line of scrimmage tonight? Second down and 10 facing Boyd. And when you stop them on first down, you can slow down the tempo a little bit. Clemson looking to the sideline. A rarity to play clock inside 10 with the Tigers with the ball. Boyd getting pressure from the outside again, and down he goes. Big number 90, Mike Rose was back there, and it's a sack in his third and long coming. You've already seen David just talk about this pass rush coming from the outside here at the top. There's Rose coming off the edge. This is a very deep D-line for Men's C State. They can go too deep almost at every position, and they can all rush the pass. Monty Nelson was back there helping as well, the freshman defensive lineman that they're very high on. So a third and 16 now for Boyd. Plenty of time. Throws underneath to McDowell. There is a flag down, and there might have been a timeout call before we got the snap off. Before the snap. Timeout, Clemson, first charge, timeout. This North Carolina State defense has come out with a little aggression after the first two quarterback runs, and defensive line is 
deep and they're playing with some fire. And that's going to be the key in this game, guys, their ability to get pressure on Taj Boyd. My biggest concern about NC State is the inexperience at linebacker and in the back end and the secondary. You're facing a Clemson offense that uses so much misdirection. They bring guys in motion, fake handoffs, they fake reverses. If you have your eyes in the wrong place, they can throw the football over your head. But right now, this D-line really asserted but, itself. But you know what does a great job of erasing those deficiencies in the back end? When you kick butt up front. Yep. When you can dominate up front, you don't have to cover receivers as long. And they've done it so far this season up front. It's, it's been a good unit. And you could argue probably that Clemson's offensive line isn't the most physical. I agree. And NC State doing a good job early. I would have taken a timeout with third and 16, by the way. Might would have just made that third and 21 and saved the timeout. Hey, this is Chad Morris now. He's got ball plays for every down. In this <laughs> First half, though. Second half. Second half, absolutely. I agree with you. Empire standing over the ball. Now we're free to snap it. The pressure coming. And it's complete. And Beautiful Sammy timeout. Watkins. How about, do you like the timeout now? He dialed up a 17-yard play on third and 16. And Roderick McDowell, the running back, is going to get introduced very unpleasantly to T.Y. McGill. But he's able to buy Taj Boyd a little time. Does a very good job throwing on the run to his and left. And you also keep two tight ends in the game, run a two-man route. If you can't protect, you keep more guys in, you still allow your guys to make plays. McDowell. Picking his way into Wolfpack territory to about the 48, pick up about four. So we talked about how NC State's defensive line is the strength of that unit. Clemson wants to demoralize them by running the football up front, being physical in this game, staying balanced. Watkins. going to be covered up. He'll be short of the first down. It'll be third and a long three. And that's not a wide receiver. That's a tailback. I mean, Sammy Watkins can run outside runs just like a tailback. He's one of the best wide receivers in the game with the ball in his hands after the catch and find ways to give it to number two all night. But coming off the field now on a critical third down, Sammy Watkins not in the game. That means it's a running down. <laughs> Boyd throwing short, another third down conversion. That one going out to Jermone Hopper. He's a freshman that they say is just as explosive as Sammy Watkins and Martavis Bryant. I think there you see the advantage of having that running quarterback. They have to honor Taj Boyd running the ball on third and short. Keep more defenders in the box, which opens up plays outside. Couple of third down conversions, and Clemson has moved it now inside the North Carolina State 35. It's Hopper with his second straight catch. We talked about the tempo. Chad Morris's goal is to go 90 plays in a game. And NC State has an up-tempo offense that they see every day in practice. They played Louisiana Tech in the first game that goes up-tempo. They've never seen a unit, though, go as fast as Clemson. Second and seven. Well, Statue of Liberty, Zach Brooks has it. Brooks has a first down, and he's to the 20. And that's the misdirection I'm talking about in this offense. It looks like Taj Boyd's going to get this ball in the shotgun. Just going to fake a little handoff here. Going to throw a swing pass up. No, no, no. Just going to hand it off the other way to Zach Brooks. That's why it's a defense. You must have your eyes in the right place because the ball go right past you. Brooks still in. Brooks has it. Brooks gets it right in the mustache. It'll be second and ten. Robert Caldwell was the first guy there. Here's Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator. He'd like to snap it around 92 times to be talked about. Last year, nearly 82 snaps per game. He's been a little faster this time. He was talking about how seconds can add up to snaps here and there, just getting the play in the touch quicker. Here and there, and we'll see if NC State can slow that tempo tonight. Boyd. In the corner, and he's going for Martavis Bryant too high. Third and 11 coming, Justin Burris on the cover. And you, you watch these Clemson wide receivers warm up, and you're just like, my goodness. Just throw another six foot six, six foot five receiver out there, 200 pounds. Bryant almost stabbed that with one hand out of the corner. If they get consistent play from Bryant, this offense is going to be unstoppable. They got a legit number one with Sammy Watkins. If Bryant steps his game up with his physical tools, Watch out. And you know, that's a tough catch. 
but one with his talent you'd like to see him make, yeah. right? Fair enough. Okay. Watkins in motion. Boy, pressure. Taj gets away for a moment, but not long enough. Another sack for the Wolfpack. Art Norman was there with Cato Bishop. Norman's a reigning ACC defensive lineman of the week and off to a good start. Talked about that defensive line. Here's a little game inside with Art Norman. Very, very quick. We talked about the depth and how many different pass rushers this defensive line has. And you've seen three very good ones already on this first drive. If Clemson's going to try a field goal with Chandler Catanzaro. This is going to be a 49-yarder. That is one short of his career long. Chandler comes into the night needing eight points to become Clemson's all-time leading scorer. They'll try to put the Tigers on the board first from 49. Plenty of distance and plenty of accuracy. So the opening drive for Dabo's team results in a field goal, but a good stop for the Wolfpack. And NC State will be on offense for the first time when you come back. North Carolina State strength is a defensive line, and David, if they're going to stay in the game, you need to keep pressuring Clemson like this. Yep, and you're going to see a ton of different looks from Clemson. It's going to be up tempo, but these guys just have to swarm, keep making play. I mean, that's that's just coming free. Attack the weakness up front for the Clemson Tigers. And Boyd, he's a great player. He obviously, just like every quarterback, becomes more human once you put some shots on. Yeah, if this offense wants to find explosive plays downfield, this offensive line is going to have to give Boyd more time. Line drive kickoff. Jonathan Alston, wide receiver, turning kickoff. Nice return, gets across the 30 yard line. That is where the Wolfpack will put it into play. Under the guidance of quarterback Pete Thomas. Pete Thomas, a transfer from Colorado State. He replaces Brandon Mitchell, who was an Arkansas transfer, injured in the first game of the season. Thomas has had a bit of a winding road. He started his career. Colorado State where he threw for more than 4,700 yards transferred here after Steve Fairchild was relieved of his duties to play in a pro style offense for Tom O'Brien and another coaching change here so he's been forced into a little bit more of a spread attack some read option which he'll readily tell you is not his strength that however it is throwing the ball and his first completion gets out to Rashard Smith the senior with the grab and a nice pickup on first down. And when the Wolfpack has the ball, this is the key matchup. Sam Pinder told you about it. Joe Tooney playing left tackle for the first time, and he's going against Vic Beasley. You saw the type of impact that Beasley can make in the Georgia game. Beasley made an impact against the Wolfpack last year with three sacks and a forced fumble. Fly sweep, Underwood has it. Brian Underwood just speed guy, and he's loose. Underwood. Inside the 20 and a great start for the Wolfpack. Robert Smith saved the touchdown. We just talked about that key matchup, Tooney versus Vic Beasley. On this play, they don't even block Beasley. This is him on the edge. You'll see. Speed sweep, leave him unblocked. He's very quick off the line. Not quick enough, though, to catch up with Underwood. Now you see Underwood, now they're walking back. I and mean, we're going to see, did Underwood step out of bounds for that? And you know what, Reese? This is what Chad Morrison Clemson does to everybody else. All the re game, don't block you, one of your best defensive linemen. I don't have to block you. Used a little bit of misdirection. Let's see the big plays negated. Underwood coming along. Yeah. yeah. So instead of the 45 yard run, it's an 18 yard pickup. Still a, a good run, but instead of having it inside the 20, you're back at the 43. Still a positive start for North Carolina State. Pete Thomas taking a shot. Got a man out there. Can he put it on him? He did, but he couldn't haul it in. He was looking for Underwood. Reese, you just talked about the promising start. It is so important that NC State is able to get off to a fast start. Chance to catch that ball. Would have had one foot in bounds. Missed play opportunity there. But guys, Clemson is a type of offense. They jump all over you. They score points quick. NC State not as talented, they cannot get behind in this game early like they did against Richmond two weeks ago, trailing 21 to 10 at halftime. Pulled that one out on a late drive and a field goal from Sadie. I'm gonna say it about Brian, I can say it about Underwood too, he probably needs to make that catch. Tony Creasy, his 
first carry, gets nothing. It'll be third and ten. Josh Watson on the stop. But you gotta like the aggressive play calling sure. by NC yeah. State. It's a, a, you know, a lot of different styles. You can try to hang close, run the football, not shoot yourself in the foot. Your quarterback hasn't played great up to this point. Remember, it's your backup quarterback in the ball game. Oh no, let's let it rip. Play action, throw it down the field. Love it early. Now here's something to watch. Third and long, obvious passing situation. NC State doesn't nearly have the athletes up front on the O-line as Clemson has on the defensive line. This is a major advantage for Clemson there in this is. game. There Pass Mr. Beasley. Jimmy does a pretty good job for a moment on him. Pete Thomas didn't have anywhere to throw it, so he just put it in the ground. It'll be fourth down. But the margin for error for this NC State offense, guys, is so small. With all the inexperience, the lack of athleticism, you can't drop home run balls deep downfield when you've got those chances against the third best team in the country, the third ranked team in the country. You got to make them. Beasley drove Tooney into the backfield. Joe stayed in front of him for a while, but Corey Crawford, Beasley both applying enough heat to force the Wolfpack into a punt. Will Bauman a little slow getting it out of there, but getting it away he does. And NC State will down it. Right about the 10 yard line making the play is Jack Tocho. Runs down and makes sure that it doesn't get into the end zone. So a 32 yard punt, but an effective one. And this is how close Underwood came. He had two opportunities on that first drive to get it deep. Missed it by that much. Clemson, number three, up by three. ESPN College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Applebee's two for $20 menu just got even better with the new Honey Pepper Grill. And in part by Hyundai. New thinking, new possibilities. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium where Clemson leads by a field goal. Dabo Sweeney not happy with his offensive line after that first series came over to gift Timothy and told him you gave up those two sacks Shaq Anthony's going in a quick change at that right tackle position on the offensive line Reese Sam a quick hook tonight from Dabo and Timothy Timothy did get yeah, understood, did get whipped a couple why. of times yeah yeah Sammy Watkins across the 15 pickup of about six here's what happened to give Timothy who's a 6'6 315 pounder that's him number 70 See him here just pass that and a couple times he barely even touched uh, the defensive line. That's, that's a swing and a miss. Yeah. I mean that's a stunt. You gotta move down with him at least get some hands on it. Yeah. Yeah. Art Norman, an undersized defensive lineman who was beating him as pass from Boyd is complete. He's got it to Stanton Seconder, who had the big catch in the game. So now Shaq Georgia. Anthony comes in the game. Sorry for cutting you out there, Reese. But one thing they lose now is a little bit of size. Shaq Anthony, 35 pounds lighter than Diff Timothy. Interesting to see if NC State decides maybe some more bull rush up front to change up the pass rush moves. Two plays in a first down for the Tigers. Quick pass. Watkins has it again. A good tackle after a short pickup. Dante Johnson gets Watkins on the ground. Shaq Anthony getting his feet a little bit wet. Look, somebody goes inside, get your hands on him, wash him down. That's what you got to do. You still have to be big and powerful on the offensive line in this offense. Chad Morris has changed his play calling a little bit here, guys. Quick passes now. The football is coming out fast. They've one guy missed in the backfield. Did Roderick McDowell, but there is a flag down. He's sitting at about the 20 yard line. Flag on the play. Jeff Heiser is our referee tonight. Holding. Offense, number 58. And you're on okay, so down. That's the center, Ryan Norton, who got nabbed for holding. All sorts of issues right now up front for Clemson. I know we've talked about the pass rushing outside, the defensive ends. But guys, I think the defensive tackle position for NC State is just as talented. And they're just as good and just as deep. Hey, they just rolled three new bodies in there. I mean, they... That's a luxury that you see a lot of teams in the SEC that people talk about being the biggest strengths of their team. So after the penalty, back up to about the 13. They need 17. Now they're going to need a whole lot more. 
because Mike Rose, not Mike Rose making two plays in the first quarter, and it'll be third and long. And he's a backup defensive end, Reeves. And here's an example, you know, coming off the ball. They really barely get hot. In fact, he's really untouched. Just watch him come off again. No hat on him. You know, I know Taj Boyd's reading him, watching to see if he hesitates, and if he does, he's going to give that, that ball away. Well, if he was reading him, he read it all. <laughs> Again, Tanji Nelson in the way. Yeah, yeah Tanji kept it. He had Monty Nelson waiting on him, too. So good defense by Dave Huxtable's group. Boyd quickly to Bryant. Bryant's got nowhere to run. It'll be fourth down, an impressive defensive performance in that series from North Carolina State. And you know what? Not only has it been the defensive line that's doing their job, but these guys are swarming around with bad intentions. Coming into collisions violently at the end, slamming people on the ground. This is how football should be played. And David, you know, a great pass rush helps out the coverage. Oh, it makes life so much easier on those inexperienced guys in the back end. And you're getting pushed and you're getting abuse up front. Sarge Smith is standing in his own territory, so the Wolfpack should get good field position. I'm sorry, it almost misjudged that thing, but he caught it going to the ground. And North Carolina State will have it for a second time, and they'll start at the Clemson 48. Tigers up 3-0 in the first. Down the stretch, and Matt Canada's breaking out a little something special. Bryant Sheriffs, a freshman from Jefferson, George, is in the game. He is the running quarterback. Run a lot of the quarterback keeps up. He has a touchdown run this year and a short game on first down. Picked up four, maybe five yards. You know, and really, you talked about how the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year was Brandon Mitchell, the transfer from Arkansas, who used to play wide receiver. Without him on the field, they lose the mystery on offense because he could, he could run the ball. Pete Thomas can't, and as a result, when they want the quarterback runs, they have to substitute the true freshman, Brian Sheriffs, in the game, and the defense knows what's coming. Well, shift in to that inverted wishbone look alongside... Pete Thomas. He'll hand it to the freshman running back, Matt Days. Hey, this is an area that I feel like Clemson has really improved the most, is their physicality on their defensive front. They got a bunch of defensive tackles that rotate in and out. Grady Jarrett, I think, is the best. But you turn on the tape and watch big goal line stand when they needed to against Georgia. Got physical. Really a stronger area than we've seen in the past from them. This is a relatively important third down for North Carolina State after that last great defensive stand in the field position they got you don't want to they're looking at three and out and now they have a third and five Thomas fires it to the outside and it is caught but it is well short of the first down making the catch is Tyler Purvis so I think you go for it now if you're Dave Dorn you've said you're gonna coach to win this game you're not gonna play it close to the vest here's an opportunity fourth and about three and they're bringing the running quarterback in, Bryant Sheriffs. Now, he's only thrown one pass all season. It was a touchdown two weeks ago against Richmond on a now pass to his running back, but everything Clemson's seen on, on tape so far has been this true freshman quarterback running the ball. you got to have something special for these type of situations with your quarterback. They do have them spread out, or at least they did. They've got to hurry against the play clock, and North Carolina State's going to use a timeout. Timeout. So fourth and two, Dave Doran and Matt Canada can reevaluate and see if they can convert against the Tigers. Officially, they're calling it fourth and two. It's a long two, ball sitting just inside the 41. Do you like the idea, assuming they stick with the stance of going for it? Yeah, I like it. I, I think you got to be aggressive in this type of game. Not a lot of people giving you a chance, playing at home. You played well on defense, an opportunity to really seize momentum. Why not? So say that again. You're playing well on defense and you're playing at home. So they're why wouldn't you punt it? I'm a quarterback. I want to go for this. Well, they're quarterback. sending they're sending the punter out. That's Will Ballman who was a little slow getting it out last time. He's average better than 41 yards per kick. Big snap. He gets it out of there. If NC State can get to and it takes a terrific bounce. And for the second straight possession, Clemson's going to be backed up in the shadow of his own goalpost. Bowman's kicks haven't been the prettiest in the world. They have been highly effective the last two times. 
Tonight's weekend menu brought to you by Applebee's. The Arizona State Stanford game is the only one matching ranked opponents, but a couple of intriguing games, including Auburn. Going to find out how good the Tigers are when they take on LSU, 745 Eastern on ESPN. I can't wait for Arizona State Stanford. Yeah. Have you watched Taylor Kelly, a quarterback, and Marion Grice? We saw them last year, early this year. Explosive on offense against that Stanford front seven. The receivers better catch the ball a little better than they did the other night against Wisconsin if they want to beat Stanford. And most fortunate to still be undefeated after that game. Taj Boyd taking the shot, standing in his own end zone, and his receiver had beaten the coverage. Martavis Bryant, but Boyd couldn't quite put it on Love it. Love taking That's shots the in the black zone. When you're coming out, a lot of people think it's going to be a run. Think you're going to try to give yourself some more field position. It's a great time to hit that home run ball. And Bryant, he had a beat. Taj has got to make a better throw. But David, I I'm curious to see Chad Morris's play calling now. It's not like him to use a lot of tight ends and running backs to help protect him. To the ground. The hole there momentarily. It closed up. As McDowell got to about the 12. He needs to get to the 16 for the first time. If they're going to want to take those shots, David, you're talking about, they got to do that. They have to have some success running the football to set up the play action to take advantage of that inexperienced secondary. How much on the ground so far for Clemson tonight? Boy, firing to the outside, back shoulder, and it's complete and a first down to freshman Mike Williams. A 6'3", 205-pounder from Vance, South Carolina. That no shot. A lot like DeAndre Hopkins last year. How many times did we say that play? If there was one-on-one, -on -one, they needed a big catch. If you put it near DeAndre Hopkins, he'd come down with the catch. You see it right there for Mike Williams, who this coaching staff believes has the biggest upside of any receiver on the roster, only a true freshman. The coach might be engaging in a little hyperbole. Hole number two that has it right now has got a pretty good upside <laughs> on him, too. And they need to keep doing that. <laughs> they need to find ways to get Sammy Watkins the football. That's every week. So you'll see him downfield catching passes, catching passes like that, handoffs, reverses, whatever it takes to get your most explosive player back to the ball. Sammy's already caught it four times. No big gains yet. Fake the handoff to McDowell. Taj has a little room. They'll have another first down for the Tigers. Robert Caldwell on the stop. And this is the trouble with this offense. It causes defenders to stop and think. Watch Norman come flying in here. He's got to stop and think about that play for McDowell coming around the outside. McGill, 75, had to think for just a second. Once you think, Taj Boyd's gone. It puts you in your eyes in conflict. Back to Watkins, his fifth pass. Be a couple yards short of the first down, the second and short. Coming. And just take it because that's an extension of the running game. That play is basically a sweep. That counts. And that's a free five, six, seven, eight yards every time. Go for it. You know what that does? That exemplifies Morris's philosophy. You can't go broke if you always take a profit. <laughs> right. Back to the ground. And there is nothing there. This time it was Zach Brooks. It'll bring up third and short. And to your point, Reese, something Taj Boyd needs to improve on is taking the profit, not trying to force the football deep downfield when it's not there. Didn't do a great job against South Carolina State two weeks ago. Tonight, he's got to be patient and just take the open receivers underneath if they present themselves. Third down and three. Clemson has converted three of five now on third down. Whistles and it's picked off, but it's not going to count. Whistles stopped it. Justin Burris. He stole to the end zone. But it's a timeout call. Clemson uses it second of the first quarter. And the second time, they've called it a great timeout. Remember the first time, third and 16? Mm -hmm. They ended up converting it after the timeout. They may have just avoided a pick six right there with that timeout call. Of course, you don't want to burn them early. But these are two cases very, very well used. I mean, look at the replay. It, it looks as if, I think Martavis Bryant yeah. heard the whistle yeah. and, and it, stopped. It's come route. out of his break. Yeah. So it'll be third and three after the near-miss interception tonight on Saturday night football, or this Saturday night, I should say. Auburn and LSU, Nick Marshall and Zach Mettenberger. Mettenberger's dubbed this. The Georgia Outcast quarterbacks game. Both Mettenberger and Marshall are former Bulldogs. They'll go at it as current Tigers, albeit of different stripes. Auburn and LSU. Boy, Mettenberger's had a great start to his season.
balling. But a chance now to show against SEC competition so more believers jump on board. If you're watching tape, he's playing the position at a way higher level than he was a year ago. He spent him a day. So too is Taj Boyd converting another third down. Tigers move the sticks. Jarvis Bird makes a stop on Sammy. You know, NC State not being very aggressive right now in the secondary. Look at all the cushion outside. It's only third and three. There are no defenders up close pressing these receivers, giving them way too easy access. That's just too easy pitch and catch. Gave him the option. Look, now Boyd is going for the big one, and he overthrows Sammy Watkins. And again, great job. They show option down the line of scrimmage. Everybody bites. You got another receiver running deep. Tosh Boyd's the Heisman front runner. You got to make that throw. Look at that. Show the option. Look at the safety run up. Linebackers run up. Drop that in the bucket. That's an easy touchdown. The problem is now that the safety's seen that, he's going to be afraid. Next time they run option, you know, you're not, they're not going to get that same look on defense. Got to take advantage. McDowell picking his way. Oh, great spin move. First down, Clemson as McDowell gets down close to the 20. McDowell has the ability to make a lot of people miss. You saw that against Georgia when he tallied off 132 yards rushing, but they need him to be consistent. Didn't have nearly the same performance against South Carolina State. Received a concussion in that game, but they need him to be week in, week out. Their feature guy, Toba. 15-yard pickup on the last one. They'll give one of those back. First guy to get there was Monty Nelson, big freshman. And how important is red zone defense when you're facing an offense like Clemson that can go up and down in the field so quickly, forcing field goals instead of touchdowns. That's key in this game for the Wolf Pack. Clemson, its last drive was its longest of the season. North Carolina State's making them work the ball down the field for the second time, longest in terms of number of plays. It'll be second and 11. One quarter is in the books when they switch into the field. Tigers will see if they can punch it in against a Wolfpack team that has been game and tough so far tonight. We start the second quarter. Taj Boyd's missed a couple of chances for big plays. Might be a reason for that, David. Uh, absolutely. Get pressure on him early. Hit him. Then when he wants to do the play action passes later, he's thinking about this. He's thinking about three NC State players on him. Get those feet set in a hurry. Airmail over top. Put a little bit more air underneath it. Another opportunity as well. Two missed shots deep to two big time playmakers. Defensive lineman helping out the secondary. Making it a little dirty for the quarterback. Well, despite the overthrows, Boyd is 11 and 15 for 92 yards in the first quarter. And Clemson on second 11 running the 12th play of this drive. Guys feeling a little heat again, throwing it along the sidelines. Pat comes off the official. The receiver went out of bounds. It was Zach Brooks. It'll be incomplete. And third and 11. Here's something else to watch over the long course of the game. That was Clemson's 30th offensive snap. NC Station snap day. That pressure Davey's talking about showing up now in his decision making. I think there was a window to throw this football yeah. in for Taj Boyd, but because of the rush, he had to get outside too early. Missed another opportunity. There. And he doesn't have to get outside. He always scrambles to get outside the pocket. Sometimes the pocket, you can step up in it and make that throw. You'd love to see him do that just a little bit more. Boyd gets rid of it. Mrs. Brooks. It'll be fourth down and 11. This offense, when they're in sync and they're in stride and Taj Boyd has time, they're virtually unstoppable playing at the tempo they play at. But because of the defensive line of NC State, they've set up second and third and long, slowing down the tempo. And right now, Taj Boyd, not sharp, a little bit rattled maybe because of those hits that David's talking about. And the defense now, second time. Forcing a field goal, not allowing a touchdown down the scoring line. Chad Rizzaro has already hit from 49. Now he'll try from 40. Flags are flying, and there's going to be a false start, so Chandler's going to get to try to show off his leg from 45. Five to snap. Snap is actually this is seven. Five yard penalty. And then it's four times. Kevin Zaro still should be money. He's hit 27 in a row from inside wow. 48 Talk yards. Talk about putting the hex on somebody, Mr. Davis. There's no such thing as the announcer hex. He just did. 
but doesn't he need like five more points to be the ACC's all-time leading scorer? That's exactly yeah. right. No, so, well, Cle Clemson's all-time. Clemson's yeah. all-time yeah. leading scorer. So, yeah, I mean, this guy is money. Don't forget about Dustin Hopkins. Gold shoes. He has Clemson's only three tonight. He'll try to make it six from 45. All right, you're off the hook. You're off the hook, Mr. Davis. I told you. There's no such thing as an announcer jinx. Catanzaro, six. North Carolina State, nothing. The Wolfpack defense stands up tall after the 13-play drive. The DirecTV drive to the National Championship Mobile Studio is back in business. Dabo Swinney hopping aboard as the mobile studio travels around the country following all the big stories. It's parked right outside our hotel for the last couple of days. Clemson staying there and Dabo spending some time with people back at headquarters at ESPN. The bus the mobile studio on its way to Atlanta for the North Carolina Georgia Tech game on Saturday. Carter Fenley Stadium, a sea of red. North Carolina Georgia Tech game. Something that'll be important over the long course of the season. And we'll talk about in our Thursday thesis as to whether the ACC is at its strongest point in the BCS era. Now, that entire story is yet to be told. It'll unfold over the course of the season. But in addition to contenders like Clemson and Florida State, he was strong upper tier as well. Perhaps Georgia Tech, maybe North Carolina will Miami. provide that in Miami as well. Clemson, a couple of field goals on a couple of 14-play drives. Wolfpack able to keep them out of the end zone so far. A kick is not going to go into the end zone. A little trouble handling it. Now this is going to be just disastrous for North Carolina State. Jonathan Alston didn't have much of a choice but to field it. Wolfpack will be backed up in their own end as we check in with Scott Van Pelt. Reese time for the Dr. Pepper 10 conference update Saturday prime time. They leave the plains of Auburn, then take their unbeaten record into Death Valley showdown with LSU. Zach Mettenberger, nine touchdowns, no picks. Auburn matched its win total from all of last season. And at some point, the sun will set and they will announce it is nighttime in Death Valley. Nothing quite like it. It is one of the great environments in college football. LSU and Auburn have a long history of playing some thrilling games anywhere, but particularly when the game's been in Baton Rouge. Look forward to that one on Saturday night. And Pete Thomas snapping it from his own eight. Pete not noted as a runner, but he can plow ahead and pick up two or three. He did a pretty good job scrambling on what turned out to be the game-winning drive against Richmond. Yeah, he has that ability game. for a guy who's six foot six. You know, it's fun. It's a fun knee watching this. NC State offense. They are up tempo like Clemson, but they look totally different. They use a lot of NFL personnel, tight ends, a lot, of shifts, a lot of shifts and motions. Yeah, and the running game looks a lot like what Matt Canada's offensive coordinator ran when he was at Wisconsin last year. It's a bit of a different look, even though they are trying to go up tempo. Shadrach Thornton checked into the game. He was suspended for the season opener, played only on special teams against Richmond, so he's getting his first offensive action. They've done the work. Thomas has his man wide open, and it is Thornton. Thornton across the 40, and Canada said we have to get him going, and they do that by getting him the football. A little taste of Clemson's medicine here on offense, using a lot of misdirection. This time in the passing game, they're going to get kind of two routes this way and sneak the fullback or the running back out the back side. There it is wide open, finding a soft spot in that defense. They're walking back. I didn't see the flag initially, but apparently we had a call. There is no foul. There's no such thing in college football. 32-yard pickup. Well, there is, but not really. On that particular play, there was. You're talking about passes completed behind the line. It's a, it's a bone of contention for my former outstanding defender that these offensive linemen make it look like run for so long, and then they throw a little pass out there. We've seen it all through college football. Offensive linemen get to run block, and the quarterback has a run pass read throws it out there you got linemen three four yards down the field that's why so, defense is getting so it's bad it's so fair i love yeah that. real fair brian sheriff's running quarterback is back in he gets across the 45 to the 46. let's have a look at that previous play again guys yeah here's your here's your right tackle right here take a peek creep 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 three four yards down the field mr chandler what do you think that's they, legal? They, I think they give him about three. That, yeah, that's so. about three and a half, four. But that's okay. Hey, no worries. It's a, it's an exciting game. People like to see points. Don't worry about it. 
Let him cheat. Is he a little bitter? Oh, hey, you know what? Always. It's a close call. They decided to wave off the flag and go, go with the jet sweep look. Here's Richard Smith. Smith's inside the Clemson 40. And this is the best drive of the night put together by the Wolfpack. More misdirection from NC State now in the reverse to Smith. Guys, it shouldn't be a surprise that NC State is playing so inspired right now. We mentioned these players have won two huge games here over the last two years against top ten competition. Playing up to the competition has never been an issue at NC State. It's playing down like they did two weeks ago against Richmond. But right now, NC State playing with their hair on fire. Thornton coming in motion. Smith has it. Richard Smith inside the 30. He takes a big hit. He'll be close to the first down. And Ryan Kristoff coming out from his left guard position getting a good block. Richard Smith, not as explosive as Sammy Watkins, but to me on tape, he's the most explosive player they have with the football in his hands after the catch. So they got to find creative ways to get him going, and they're doing that a good job on this drive. About this formation right here. How many beast. women can you play? And Brian Sheriff's the running quarterback is in. Thornton still in motion. Sheriff's looking for a crease inside the 20, and he'll lunge across that yellow line inside the 20. Another Wolfpack first down. Doing their best Stanford impersonation. Now, they didn't have any extra offensive line, and those extra bodies were all tight ends. But just look at this up front. Just a wall of red. Wants to cut by Sheriff, sticking the foot in the ground and getting an extra six, seven yards down the field. That's why they bring him in there. Beasley, good job blowing up two blockers. And something Clemson has not yet seen on tape. So already those wrinkles, Matt Canada, an offensive coordinator, deep in, or reaching deep into his playbook, give Clemson some different looks. And Pete Thomas is back at quarterback and whistles and flags. Dave Doran. Ball start. Offense number 82. Oh, the is rolling down. The mob is coming up. It's a false start. First down. It's Asa Watson, the tight end, who's called for the false start, and will back up NC State five yards. Take him just out of the red zone now. It'll be first and 15. And the 21. Pete Thomas back to quarterback. Shadrack Thornton. Thornton, big hole. Inside the 10. Thornton inside the 5. And driving toward the end zone. Shadrack Thornton, did he get in? He did. Touchdown, NC State. Seven play 92 yard drive. Said they wanted to get Thornton, who led the team in rushing with nearly 700 yards last year, involved. Boy, is he involved. A 32 yard catch, a 21 yard touchdown run on that drive. Assuming it stands, they're going to review and see if Thornton got into the end zone. Go back and take a look here. Thornton made it in. Three bodies on him as he's driving. Look at that. He got hit in the pile. six. Hasn't been down yet. Yeah, he's still up. Watson still up. coming in to help. What a run. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be looking for where the football is. Does it at any point break the plane before his knee touches? Yeah. Before his butt touches right there. I mean, the football's in his right hand. I say give go. him six, boys. Look again. That effort is awesome. Remember, you need indisputable video evidence to overturn this call. Call in the field was touchdown. It's so hard to see where he's at with the Clemson defender on top of him. That's and a great effort. Right there. Hey, you know, I think wow. he's down on the half-inch yard line. Well, where's, of course you do. He's a defensive player. Where's the ball? Uh, you know, <laughs> either way, and we're, we're sitting here splitting hairs over yeah. whether it's a touchdown or it's going to be first and goal. What strength, what balance, what determination yeah. Yeah. from... Shadrach Thornton, who was suspended for the season opener after being involved in an off-the-field incident, a misdemeanor assault case involving his girlfriend. He has reached a deal in which his record can be cleared. If he stays out of trouble, he served the suspension, played only on special teams against Richmond, and big part of the offense here tonight.
After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. A 21 yard run. They had some serious attitude. Ties the game at six. And if Sadie can put the extra point through, the Wolfpack, noted for monumental upsets in this stadium, would have the lead in the second quarter. Pack on top. We've seen NC State spit the football out outside and as a result the defense has to honor that you count only six defenders inside seven blockers on offense for nc state that favors them up the middle they're able to get a push there's a big lane i'm not great at math but seven on six is, is that good, advantage right? yeah way to go dude nice thornton can add two that run gave him six Good hands field goal nets. All state makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, All state has contributed more than three million dollars in scholarship funds. Old Pete Thomas led a seven-play, 92-yard drive, first touchdown of the night for either team. Shadrach Thornton went in, make it seven-six, and perhaps the most important part of that drive. While it only covered seven plays, it did give the Wolfpack defense a chance to catch its breath. Now you can imagine they'll come out with a lot of energy. Their good work in the early going has paid off. Their team has a lead. Kick off out of the back of the end zone. A touchback. Clemson will have it at the 25. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows. Couple of games available across the Fruity Plain. Michigan going on the road to pay the rent. <laughs> Rentschler Field against UConn, Kansas State, and Texas. Longhorns on a two-game losing streak. Matt Brown has been under some fire. Jackson Jeffcoat, the fellow, is going to try to stop the run against Kansas State, a team that's beaten five straight times. Say that again? Kansas State's owned them lately. Five straight times. So no Colin Klein. Clemson does have Roderick McDowell, and he's got a big gain on first down and still on his feet. McDowell across the 50 before he's knocked out of bounds. Making the tackle is DJ Green, but a big pickup for Roderick McDowell, 30 yards on the carry. And this could help this offense so much. It helped create space for Sammy Watkins. Good job by the offensive line. But McDowell early in the season showing the ability to make people miss and run tough. Right in McCurt, Martavis Bryant's knees. He went down and caught it. It'll be a very short game, Justin Burris. And really up to that point, guys, NC State's defense hadn't allowed any explosive plays. It's critical for them to make Clemson drive the field. Already they've made Clemson have two drives of 13 plays. It's hard to sustain that to score points. Hard to execute, hard to not have penalties. Boy. Now he's going to be wrestled down at a just short of the 38-yard line. It'll be about three and a half short. And this is what makes this offense so hard to defend, is you have a tailback playing quarterback that's big and physical. You get the running game going, and now you run the counter across the formation, and he can make a miss. He's thick. Really makes it adds an extra dimension to this offense. It makes it even more difficult. On third down. Boy, way too high for his six-foot-five receiver. It'll be fourth down. Again, an example of Taj Boyd not exactly on the same page with this wide receiver. There was a spot in that defense for a big catch to convert that third down. And NC State gives up the long run, but then they bow up. Now it appears as though <laughs> Clemson's going to set up for a long field goal. Well, I mean, my goodness, the way he hit it from 50 earlier, he has the leg. There ain't no doubt about that. Right. Reese, how many has he made in a row? Well, not from this distance. Oh, Inside okay. 48, made 28 in a row now. This is 55. It would be a career long. But also making Clemson's all-time winning score. But it's going to be the snap directly to him for the pooch punt. And, well, that wow. was so close to perfect, but it is a touchback. That thing was a touchback by maybe a half yard. Panzaro almost pin the Wolfpack back on their one-inch line. Been near miss so far in the first half for Clemson. NC State's up by a single. 
championship team back in 1957. This Wolfpack hungry to upset the start for the preseason favorite this year in the ACC in Clemson. Wolfpack with a 7-6 lead. Ball back on the 20 after the punt from the Tigers. Pete Thomas firing underneath him, way behind his intended receiver, Brian Underwood. Just a bit outside. <laughs> but because they've had success running the football, guys, they can run play action on first down and try to catch Clemson off guard. We've seen them run it conventionally. They've gone speed sweeps. They brought the backup quarterback, Brian Sheriffs, in. Mixing it up right now on the ground. They have to be able to have that balance running the football. Speaking of balance, look at that unbalanced <laughs> line right there. Goodness wow. gracious. They're giving him some looks. It's the freshman at days. He's a short pickup. It'll be third and long. Just another day at the office. Six guys on one side of the line of scrimmage. <laughs> That's it's a lot of beef. How, how many if you want a tendency side? of where the ball's going, you got a good chance if you think it's going that way. But you know what? It's just another wrinkle for the defense to think about the linemen to have to shift the linebackers fits and makes it a little bit more confusing it makes you think a little bit more so now david clemson has to think about getting off the field getting a big stop here on third down getting the football back to taj boyd allow them to get into a rhythm with our matchup with mr beasley thomas fires complete and I don't think they got a field. That was Braylon Cherry, the freshman, and Braylon was unable to keep his momentum from carrying him out of bounds. If he'd stayed in bounds, he would have had the first down. I'm amazed that Pete Thomas even got this football out. It's a good thing he's six foot six. He had a lot of bodies. You see Beasley here coming off the edge, but there's two or three guys right in front of him when he throws this. He's got a middle linebacker and Anthony jumping up. That height coming into play right now for the quarterback delivers a strike. That's an NFL throw. Man, you got to get that first down. Cherry's got to get up field and get by that stick. I mean, there's no excuse for stepping out of bounds there. Freshman mistake. Maybe a little excited and anxious. Adam Humphreys is deep to return the punt for Clemson. And the play clock is at zero, and the flags are out. But. Delay a game, offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. And North Carolina State be backed up five yards. Will Bowman still will try to flip the field with a big punt if he can. His two punts have not been very long tonight, but both have been down inside the 20. This time he needs a rocket. with motion on the punt team. Going a low kick. Clemson will not have a chance to return, and it'll be touched dead at the 36-yard line of Clemson. That's where the Tigers will put it in play as we hear from Sam Ponder. Sam? Reese, I watched Taj Boyd over that last series, how he came off the field for obvious reasons, very discouraged, sat down on the bench, put his head down. Chad Morris, offensive coordinator, came over to him and said, stop pressing, you're pressing, stop pressing, just play. And that's what we heard from the coaches this week, that with all the Heisman talk and everything people are saying on the outside, he was trying to be Superman, trying to do too much. They want him to just be patient and just play the game like he's used to, guys. He'll start it on the ground. This is D.J. Howard. Howard runs through a couple of guys for a short game. And to the point about, about Taj Boyd, his stats are pretty good in terms of accuracy, but even a couple of the completions haven't been put in places where the receivers could run with the ball. He, he hasn't been sharp tonight Yeah, so to far. Sam's point, he doesn't have to win the Heisman Trophy on each and every throw. He's got so many playmakers. Just be the point guard. Distribute the football to your guys. Let them run with it. Make plays for you. Boyd feeling some heat, and this time he's going to have to throw it away. Pressure being applied by D.J. Green. Will the ball get back to the line of scrimmage? Well, he might have gotten outside the tackle box on the roll. Still needs to get yeah. out there. And you see North Carolina State again doing a good job. Got a little bit of confusion up front for Clemson. Nowhere to go with the football. I mean, there's nothing to blame on Todd on that one. got to throw it away. This is where he hasn't been sharp. Third downs, he's trying to throw back shoulders. He's been missing a little bit high. He's going to do a better job hitting his guys in stride. Two guys with their hand on the ground, and underneath, the umpire pulls.
playing some pretty good defense on Martavis Bryant, as was Justin Burris. It'll be fourth down and six. And they're getting him into these obvious passing situations. Defensive coordinator Dave Huxtable is now making it confusing for this Clemson offensive line to figure out who's rushing. They're standing up, a bunch of D linemen, guys are moving around. I used to call that a radar look when I was on the New York Giants, and it's difficult to know which guys are coming free. And right now, very difficult for Taj Boyd to get into any kind of road. Edley Pinion's going to have to punt it for Clemson. Charge Smith returning. Flags flying. It'll be a false start on the Tigers. Hot snap, false start. Offense, number 13. I got Tunnelly, score fourth down. Adam Humphreys, wide receiver, special team standout, a little bit anxious. It hasn't gone quite according to plan for Debo Swinney and the Tigers in the first half. Kenyon backed up. Smith waves his arm for a fair catch, comes up and fields it across his own 25, and it'll be pretty good field position, though a flag comes in late after the whistle blew, so we'll have some type of dead ball foul. We'll see who it goes against. It might be Josh Stanley in some extracurriculars. He's getting an earful. Dave Doran. Rightfully so. Hey, really good field position. After the play is over, personal foul. Number 24. 15 yards in. First down. It's also gonna, the kind of plays that drive you crazy because your defense gets a big stop. Doing a good job against this offense. And then after the play, that's not it there. Just a little shove. You know what, that wasn't that bad. But the whistle blew. This is good here. That's solid. <laughs> a little push afterwards, just not needed. A personal foul called on Stanley, NC State, holding the 7-6 lead. Saturday night football, Michigan, Connecticut, and Captain Clemson offense, North Carolina State, with a 7-6 lead, Tony Creasy. A good gain on first down. Here is Neville Swinney getting together with Taj Boyd after uh, that last offensive series. And Taj Boyd obviously discouraged. He's been hit a couple times, hasn't had the time he'd like to throw. He's missed a couple big throws downfield, but you're a senior. You're the leader of this football team. Right now, struggling. You know, your teammates have to see you more energized. Greasy picked up five on first down and lost two on second. It'll be third and seven. That's Corey Crawford on the stop. And Crawford's a guy that's really come on this season. You watched him last year, you were, oof, there's a lot of work to do. But him and Beasley both developing, second year in the system. Venables is a tough guy. He doesn't expect, he does not let you get away if you're not a tough guy. You're not getting on the field if you don't have some toughness. And he's picked up his game. Him and Beasley make that front a lot more respectable. There is Brent Venables, a former Oklahoma assistant. Lacks passion, doesn't he, Grease? <laughs> Man. Brett, Brett was fired up. We saw him this morning early, ready to go about 9 o'clock. Pete Thomas, and Crawford just misses him. Pete's going to run, try to get to the sticks. He gets tripped up, and that might have been a first down saving tackle, I thought, initially from Spencer Shuey. There is a flag down. It's sitting back on the seven-yard line. They don't run a lot of designed runs with Pete Thomas, but don't let the six-foot-six six frame fully on third down. He can get outside and try to make something happen. Did a much better job of that against Richmond in the second game than he did in the first game against Louisiana Tech. We'll see what the call is. Question here. might be why he got outside the pocket and was able to run. Yeah, a lot of pressure from Clemson. Yeah, yeah but I'm saying it might have been. Illegal block, roll the race. 74 offense. 15, half the distance. Still third down. Because of where the infraction occurred, they'll mark it off half the distance to the goal. Tyson Chandler called for that penalty. You know, it, said it earlier guys just this offense as inexperienced as they are lacking the playmakers there's a small margin for error when you have a positive play you can't have penalties like that to take you back well you got the 15 yard right, penalty exactly. on the punt which is bonehead and in that play right there that was awful chandler's the ball seven yards down the field chandler wraps back around and hits vic beasley below the waist way after the play if you're gonna pull the upset you can't shoot yourself in the foot consistently like that gotta believe quarterback runs coming to brian sheriffs there he is beasley going over the top and trying to stop him stefan anthony 
and he tried to finish it. David, here's the penalty that you were just talking about on Chandler. Yeah, these are the kind of things you can't do. You, you see right here. Look, at, the quarterback's gone. And you're try, and listen, they're trying to protect players with the low blocks, and they're going to call that. You can't, when the ball's 15 yards out of the way, go out of the way to go so, and do something stupid like that. So, guys, if I'm Taj Boyd now, I'm jumping up and down. I'm getting the offense ready to go. We're going to get the football in great field position. Yeah, we've been sputtering. Let's get excited. We're going to go out. We're going to drive the football down the field, score some points, get in a rhythm. Get excited right now if you're on offense. Get this thing going. Get some life. Little Bowman standing right at his goal line. Clemson peeling back. He set up the return, but Adam Humphreys is going to call for the fair catch at his own 44. Shouldn't be a big surprise that North Carolina State is leading a highly ranked team here in Raleigh. Last year, it was Mike Glennon after being behind 16-0 at halftime, finding Brian Underwood, and they knocked off number three, Florida State, by a single, knocked the Seminoles from the national championship race. The year before, it was Taj Boyd and Clemson coming in with one loss in ranked seven. And this was a complete beatdown, a 27-0 second quarter turned into a 37-13 victory. Clemson was sloppy with the football, turning it over on several occasions. And Martavis Bryant, who's had trouble catching the ball, had four drops against Georgia, bobbled one going out of bounds they here. They need him to step up. They need somebody opposite of Sammy Watkins that can make plays. We've seen this way too often already this year there letting the football get into his body instead of catching it with his hand i'll tell you what guys coming off the bus he's on the all bus team yeah. he comes on the field you like that guy i want him on my team draw mcdowell just across the line of scrimmage it'll be third and nine again for this offense if they got to convert here they'll have their third three and out tonight and it was places like this last year deandre hopkins really showed up when there was a one-on-one -on -one, you needed a play he threw it up to DeAndre Hopkins. He was your best route runner. He was your most physical guy. He'd make that play. Sammy Watkins, not the same type of receiver. Someone else has to step up. Third and nine. Boy, wide open man. And this guy will step up for you. Sammy Watkins and Boyd. Hit just one of his previous eight passes, but he gets a big one there to convert a third down. 28 yards. Forget somebody else stepping up. Go to the guy you don't have to worry about. Nice little post corner route by Sammy. You know what he can do. And because of that speed, corners are so afraid to press him. So you saw the cushion right there by Justin Burris at corner. That allows Sammy Watkins to run the double move and get to the sidelines. And Daryl Cato Bishop, defensive end. Fifth year senior it is down on the field. We'll check on his condition as they work on his ankle when you come back. Applebee's new honey pepper. Time report Scott Van Pelt, Mark May, Brian Greasy with thoughts on the upset minded pack here in the first half. Reese, as you know, not a great slate of games this weekend. We'll focus in on the one top 25 versus top 25 showdown and I introduce you to a couple of young men with this Clemson program that folks at home probably don't know but wish they did. RD, back to you. All right, Scott, sometimes when the slate doesn't look good, surprises can happen. So far, we've got a little bit of one brewing in Raleigh. Taj Boyd on first down, fires it, and it's knocked away from Sammy Watkins. Strong defensive play by Jarvis Bird. It'll be second and ten. The pass rush by Art Norman coming off the edge again disrupts the timing. That football came out a little bit late. Watkins was open, but a nice job breaking on the ball there by Jarvis Bird. And Sammy could have came back to that ball a little bit, too. He, he, Bird had a better break on the ball than Sammy did. He could have helped his quarterback out a little bit. Clemson's had a couple of 14-play drives, stalled and turned into field goals. Boyd trying to run with it. Ties. He's going to lose a couple. It'll be third and long. P.Y. McGill and Brandon Pittman on the stop. Again, tonight, NC State defensively has been so good in this area, the fringe area of the field. Not giving up touchdowns, forcing field goals. This is where they played their best defense tonight. Dave Huxtable, the gray wolf. Hey, he bumped up some defense today. You know what? He's here. He was at Pittsburgh last year, Wisconsin before that, UCF previously. He, he looks, he's at home here. He kind of looks like Tuffy the mascot. <laughs> that great beard working. Third and 12 for Boyd. 
shoulder fake. And then underneath the Sammy Watkins. Watkins gets close to the first down, but he's going to be stopped a couple of yards short. Fourth down coming. Jack Tocho grabbing Watkins after he makes his eighth reception of the ninth. It was against NC State last year that Sammy set a career high with 11 catches. He's well ahead of that pace tonight. They might get it to him on fourth down here. Well, they would, but he's, I mean, he's checked out of the game. Watch for the quarterback run right away. He could spit this outside as well on a quick throw. He's got some access to a receiver, but this is an area where Todd Boyd likes to run the football. Dowell coming in motion. Boyd is going to run it. Boyd has a first down. He's inside the 15. And knocked down just short of the 10. His willingness to run the ball has made this offense so much better over the last two years. On third down, fourth down, especially in the red zone. Here's the play. You got the misdirection with McDowell coming in motion. Freezes the defense for just a split second. That's all Boyd did. Boyd, wide open man, thrown low. Did he make the grab? Touchdown. A tremendous grab by the big tight end, Sam Cooper. Sam Cooper picked that one off his shoelaces. Let's see if he got it. That nice. is a grab. Nicely done by Cooper. Mr. Cooper in the house. Apparently in that particular case, North Carolina State couldn't hang with Mr. Cooper. Nice Boyd has his first touchdown pass. It breaks a tie for third place with former North Carolina State great Russell Wilson on the ACC's all-time touchdown pass list. And Taj Boyd, or Chad Morris, does a nice job disguising Seconder, who actually lined up there as a tackle, although he was eligible because of the formation to get out. I don't know what that defense expected him on the route. He was hidden. Well, if you show it from the top of the clip, Watch what the formation is first. Now, now watch. All of a sudden, you spread out again. Defense doesn't have time to react. You think that's a tackle. It's really a tight end. Slip it in there with a little bit of confusion. Again, it's the fast-paced offense. You don't have time to think sometimes when they go that fast, especially when they shift the motion. The old modern-day tackle elements. Yeah. Again, this offense is not extremely difficult, but it's when you play that fast and you make people think that fast and you got these kind of playmakers, that's when it gets difficult. And guys, a great job by Taj Boyd. Big throw there to Sammy Watkins on third down. Keep that drive going. He responded. That's the type of play we are accustomed to seeing from Taj Boyd. Cooper has his first catch of the season and third career touchdown. And the fifth punching up 13-7. Jonathan Alston coming out for the Wolfpack. Still on his feet. He's knocked down at the 23. There will be 2.17 remaining in the half for Pete Thomas and the Wolfpack offense. 79, ESPN College Football Primetime. Zach Mettenberger appears to be one of the most improved quarterbacks in the country under new offensive coordinator Cam Cameron. Number six, LSU taking on Auburn. Tigers have pulled a couple out of the fire against Wazoo and then last week against Mississippi State when Nick Marshall threw a touchdown pass in the waning seconds. 7.45 Eastern time. Death Valley or at least the one that LSU calls Death Valley, but David likes to stir the pot with LSU fans by declaring Clemson as Death Valley, and the only one right now. Who won the game last year in the matchup? Clemson won the bowl game matchup. Pete Thomas takes one right in the teeth and has his man wide open. It's Rashard Smith, and Smith will dance out of bounds. And how about a top-minded, big-time throw by Thomas. This is the second time they've been able to hit a wheel route on this defense with a post outside. Last time they hit the running back Thornton. This time they find Smith down the sideline. Ah, they got their own little trick racing now. Ooh. How, uh, about, how about this? Everybody go to the left. And now there's a flag. Oh. Too many people in the huddle. Come on, if you're, if you're going to try to surprise the defense, you can't get an illegal substitution. Illegal substitution. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Now you can't do it. I don't know. It makes it kind of confusing when there's 12 guys. Yeah. It's a little bit more difficult. I mean, I love the creativity we've seen from Matt Canada, offensive coordinator, so far tonight. I mean, he's dug deep in the playbook, and he told us that he was going to play, call the game to win. They were going to have some funky stuff. They were going to throw at Clemson. I would have loved to have just seen what that was going to be. <laughs> we won't get the chance now because of an illegal substitution. 
Matt did say that he's been known if it works. We don't know if that was going to work, but that he would run a play again. So maybe you'll get to see it later in the drive in the second half. Oh, and yeah. instead, they're going to throw it in reverse. Yeah. All star offense, number 74, five yard penalty, still first down. And Matt Canada, remember, it's their first year in the system. This is a different system than they practiced all summer. They had a scrambling quarterback because of injury. It's had to change, but last two possessions, Reese, it's been self-inflicted wounds with the personal foul, the block below the waist, and now nice play on first down, and you shoot yourself in the foot two more times. Again, margin of error is very, very small. Very small. Shadrach Thornton, who had the touchdown in motion coming back for Thomas. He'll get it to Smith, and Smith is wrapped up. They get two penalties to lose five yards each, and they lost just about that on the completion. You know, they can't afford to be sloppy, guys. And against Richmond, that's exactly what they were as an offense. They turned it over four times. They had ten penalties as a team. And Richmond almost beat them. A football champion subdivision team came in here and almost beat them. They have to be smarter. So Thomas is going to try to see what Canada has in the playbook for second and 23. Now Taj Boyd came into this game, eyes control for candidate, a lot of hype. Looking a little bummed after his start, but what did you see from him on the last drive? Well, he really responded. He was able to stay in the pocket. The offensive line did a much better job giving him time, and as a result, he was able to fire some darts downfield for explosive plays. You see a bunch of oh, Taj Boyd. There you go. We don't give Davo Swinney a bunch of credit too as a coach for understanding the time to go over and have that conversation with your quarterback. You don't need to be in his face all game long, but that was a moment that Taj Boyd needed to be spoken to. Really good job by Davo Swinney, understanding the opportunity, acknowledging it, and helping his quarterback out. And Pete Thomas hoping that he's going to give him a little help now in second and 23. Pete underneath. Complete. A lot of Clemson guys around Brian Underwood. How much room to run to be third down coming. I'll tell you what, you want to know how to run to the football? That's a perfect example for Mr. Crawford right there. Venables is loving that. Rushing the quarterback on the left side of your screen right over there. Turn, run to the football. Ooh, that's how you get fumbles. That's how you, that's how you make things happen. That's a great job by Crawford. North Carolina State hasn't converted a third down tonight. 21 if they're going to do it here. I don't think Pete's going to get it running. He's not. Grady Jarrett here to swallow him up. Timeouts would be nice now, wouldn't it? We talked about it. Ben Clemson's got one. But nice to have those two today. And I think they're going to call it and make NC State at least punt it away. So a 13-7 Clemson lead, and we've talked about the fact that the Wolfpacks pulled upsets against top 10 teams in each of the last two years in much better shape than they were against Florida State last year. They were down 16-0 yeah. at halftime and came back and won it. What have you seen in the first half that makes you think that NC State can sustain this and give Clemson a run all the way to the end? It's the play by the defensive line so far in this game, getting pressure on Taj Boyd, getting them out of rhythm. Now, on that last possession, didn't do quite as good a job. Go back in at halftime, regroup. Be very happy right now. You're holding this offense, just 13 points. You're in good shape, better shape than I think you could have hoped for coming into this well, game. And sometimes you just tip your cap to the offense because they're going to get theirs. But I think they got to continue to do well in that fringe area, that, that goal line red zone situation. And they got them to kick field goals. That, that's the biggest thing. You're not going to stop this offense, but keep making them kick field goals, and it gives you a chance. And All right, Duran is not going to risk the punt and getting it blocked. So he left his offense on the field. NC State, final timeout. Well, the Every obvious, the timeout. obvious strategy there would be to make sure that you don't leave any time on the clock on this play and run around. And, and, that's the challenge. Yeah. But you know, do you do it with Pete Thomas or do you do it with a guy like Brian Sheriffs, the backup, who's a lot more mobile and maybe gives you a better chance to run that clock out? The last thing you need is taking a sack early or throwing the ball out of bounds not quick enough and giving Clemson the football back with an excellent kicker with time to go in your own end. Pete Thomas is a big boy with a big arm. You think he can throw it that far? He's got to throw it high. I mean, take a shot down the field. Well, well I mean, you know, if you do scramble around, just, yeah, put it up. Yeah. You know, a lot like kind of Colt McCoy. 
Well, and, and the other, a couple of years ago in that Big 12 title game. Well, the other thing, too, to remember is if you do take a shot at a long ball and just throw it deep down the field to get a pass that's interference a fair, penalty, yeah. you, you perhaps could get a tangible shot. And that's the type of thing it looks as if North Carolina State's lined up to do. Uh, he needs to make sure Beasley doesn't sack him. Now Thomas heaving it down close to the goal line, and it looked for a second as if he had a shot at making the grab. There's that big time arm, though. He chucked it. That was Jermichael Ramos, 85, coming into the picture. I thought he was going to hit him right in stride for a second. So 13 7, entertaining first half in Raleigh. And Munson, number three in the country, they have the lead as we go down to Samantha Ponder. Coach, what's your assessment of what kept your offense from getting in the rhythm you were looking for? Just missed plays. I mean, we got, got a couple guys wide open behind them and just missed those plays. But listen, we're moving the ball. That's about as bad as we can play offensively in the first half. But our defense is doing a good job. And uh, outside of, you know, that wheel route right there. But, hey, it's a good, tough ball game on the road. And uh, we got the lead at half, but we got a long way to go. Obviously, Taj has been in high-pressure situations before. You've seen him make those throws. What was your message to him? Just go next play. I mean, it's next play. That's all there is to it. Uh, and he came back and made a great post-corner throw on, on third down there to Sammy and put a good drive together and put his team in end zone. That's what we got to keep doing. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, Sam. Sammy Watkins with eight catches in the first half for 87 yards. Clemson on top of NC State, 13-7. Time now to send you to Scott Van Pelt in the Land Rover Halftime Report. They're howling for you. ACC on ESPN about to start the third quarter. Number three, Clemson, with a 13-7 lead on North Carolina State. Chris Davis, Jesse Palmer, David Collins, Samantha Ponder. Glad to have you with us for this ACC opener for both teams. As we get set to start the second half, NC State will have it first. Let's take a look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by Home Depot. And it's been the NC State defensive line with four guys being able to press on Taj Boyd up front and really get after this Clemson offensive line. It's really made the game plan shrink and not be able to throw those balls down the field. But Jesse, head talk. Yeah, Dabo Sweeney gave it to him, and all of a sudden that offensive yeah, line that played ball. better and quarterbacks throw better when they have time. Taj Boyd able to find Sammy Watkins on a huge post corner throw, converted a fourth down with his legs, led him into the end zone. And now the Heisman contender all smiles again heading into halftime. They have to be able to keep that momentum on offense here in the second half. For each of the last two years, guys, as we talked about, an unranked North Carolina State team has beaten a top 10 foe. Last year it was Florida State. The year before it was Clemson. NC State is going to have designs on doing that, you'd think. It would be important to take this opening possession and make it a positive one. Jonathan Alston. That's not the way you want to start. Stop short of the 15 on the kickoff return as we check in with Samantha Ponder. Not the way you want to start the second half, but Dave Dorn happy with the way his team started the first half, telling me the energy and passion and emotion they came out with is what made the difference. But like all coaches, frustrated with penalties. I asked him how his offense held this Clemson defense, and he said that wasn't the issue. It wasn't the defense. It was that our offense was shooting ourselves in the foot with penalties on defense. He said they've got to force turnovers. And an update for you at defensive end, Daryl Cato Bishop is out for the game with a left foot injury. Well, Sam, that's going to hurt the pass rush. Cato Bishop was very active. He had six and a half sacks last year. First play on the ground. It's the freshman running back, Matt Days. Solid pickup on first down. Here's the first half stats. You see the rush yards in favor of North Carolina State. Had a couple of big runs, including the touchdown run by Thornton, but Dodge Boyd threw for 144 in the first half. Yeah, NC State did, though, find some explosive plays on offense, both throwing it and running it. The challenge now for offensive coordinator Matt Canada can you continue being unpredictable with new formations and different plays. Fairly predictable. 
hopefully effective. The second straight run for days is going to leave a third and about four. We talked at the start of the game, guys, about the matchup between Vic Beasley, the pass rush specialist from Clemson, against Joe Tooney at left tackle, playing out of position. We haven't called Beasley's name a lot so far in this game. Clemson could benefit from a great effort from him in the second half. Well, you'd like to say that a lot of third down opportunities, they only had five, and they were 0 for 5. And he definitely doesn't have a sack, but he's got some pressure. He hasn't been completely MIA yet. Need a long three. There you go. Call his name, brother. Right, away. right on cue, Call him out. That's right. You've got to call brother out sometimes. Get some production around here. There's he, he, he's, he's a sudden, sudden athlete. And he's not he's not the biggest guy in the world. But watch him quick step upfield. Nice jab step. Nice rip getting it off of the tackle's hand off of him. His explosiveness off the ball, David, reminds me of Jadavian Clowney. With, with respect to how quick he comes off the ball. Freakishly fast. Here's a guy that came here as a running back, played tight end, moved him to linebacker, then moved him down to defensive end. He's found a home. He's going to play there on Sundays. He's got that kind of physical ability. Only weighs about 235, 240 pounds, but he uses that speed and strength to his advantage. Will Bowman's going to have to punt it away after the fourth three and out of the night from North Carolina State. Adam Humphreys from his 40. Humphreys returns it. About eight yards, and Clemson will put it in play for the first time in the second half after Alston makes the tackle. Eight yard return. They'll start at their own 48 yard line, and we'll see Taj Boyd. You know, Reese, you just mentioned the four three and outs caused by Clemson's defense. That's allowed this offense already to run 46 plays. Their goal is to get 92 per game. They're on pace right now. How does that tempo in the second half now wear this NC State defense down? Also, a little thinner, as Sam mentioned, on the defensive line without Cato Bishop. Martavis Bride, who had a rough first half. It's a quick catch. Dante Johnson on the stop. But that's a good idea, because he has had a rough half. So why not give him an easy completion? Try to get some confidence going with Martavius Bryant. Second down after the four-yard pickup. Tried it to the right now back to the left and sammy didn't hold it but that's one david that's one of those inaccurate balls i mean it should have been caught no question about it but you make it a little bit easier there he had a lot of inaccurate balls in the first half and he had a lot of opportunities to to make some big plays and blow this game open but he did rally it back but no he's, he's shown that throughout the first couple games of the season he'll make some wild plays but he does he leaves some out there as well you just want to see less of that from him Clemson five of eleven on third down tonight Make it five out of 12. It'll be fourth down. Big stop by Brandon Pittman, who's a sudden quick twitch guy from his linebacker position. Another inaccurate throw, though, by Taj Boyd on the outright. Look at the catch by Sammy Watkins reaching deep. You throw those out routes behind like that on Sundays, that's a pick six. And NC State doesn't quite have the athleticism to match up. Taj Boyd has to be very careful here. Hasn't always been sharp tonight. So the NC State defense steps up and is trying to force a three and out. And Clemson, That's like even first three half. minutes into the second half, they have to burn a timeout because they apparently had a little personnel issue on the punt team. Can't have it. You know, Dabo is, Dabo's blood pressure just went up a few points. He is letting Travis Blanks have it. <laughs> Travis. Uh, he got his ears cleaned out after that one for sure. Clemson's leading, but NC State's hanging in. It's 13-7 early in the third. Apple. Of course, like cold hard facts, Indianapolis, of course, traded for Trent Richardson. Chuck Pagano says, quote, how much will they give him? As much as he can handle. We didn't trade for him to stand on the sidelines. The Colts on the road against the 49ers Sunday. Back to Reese. How about giving Andrew Luck another weapon like Trent Richardson? With the first and third pick in the draft the last couple of years and Luck and Richardson. Bradley Pinion, a beautiful punt and excellent coverage by the Clemson punt team after they got 11 guys on the field to handle it, which caused them to burn a timeout. And NC State will have it backed up deep in their own end. Your College hand game right day, up. look at this, headed to Fargo, North Dakota. 9 a.m. Eastern time, there's Bobby, the bus driver, rolling in. Oh, yeah, we got to get Pollock on that bus. 
He'll be on that I'll bus there pretty soon. soon. Don't worry uh, about yeah, that. I mean, I mean on the on the bus wrap, on the oh. picture on the side of the bus. Oh. Half like trivia question. Boy, game day. Up, baby. I do what I can for my boy. College game day will be in Fargo this Saturday. When was the last time game day went to a non-FBS school? Chance to think about some game day trivia. We're going to North Dakota State had a tremendous run at the football championship subdivision level. Brendan Payton makes the catch with the first down, and here's the answer. Last time game day went to a non-FBS school, it was in 2008. Let's see the Rattlers of Florida A&M. It's always so much fun to see the crowds when they go to these uh, these, these programs. They're not traditional. Yeah, be careful how you say football. that, there, brother. Yeah, but they, oh, <laughs> they get excited. I don't think anybody in Fargo will get angry about that. Tony Creasy's he's hitting the backfield. And knock down. You know how, how Fowler does that $100 challenge yeah. question? I've got, as you take a look, this is what it looks like in Fargo as they await for the arrival of the entire game day crew. I'll offer 10 American dollars to the first analyst who says to Fowler, because I love the movie Fargo, and they'll answer something and say, Yeah, you betcha, Chris. How much? 10 American dollars. Okay. Second down and 14 after the loss. Keith Thomas just before he gets hit. Dumps it out of the backfield to Rashard Smith. There's a short gain and it'll bring up third down and long. Just where they don't want to be. Long, third and long? Yeah, third and long situation. But you Not see really. Beasley again. Kind of put him in a bind early, but good job. Forget about Mr. Watson and get back to the quarterback too. But this is now where you tee off situation where first of all you haven't converted a third down today. You're gonna get furious about this. Uh -oh. I'm not saying it should have been a penalty. I'm just saying Watson's probably lucky it wasn't the way the way they're protecting quarterbacks. Yeah, I know. Or Sometimes lucky. I feel like we should put a skirt on it. Oh now. I'd like to point out that the opinions of David Pollock <laughs> do not necessarily reflect those of ESPN or yeah. Jesse Palmer and myself. Thomas in front of the side. <laughs> and he's tackled. <laughs> Here's defensive coordinator Brent Venables doing a nice job mixing up his pressure. This time coming from the top of the screen. Corner and weak side linebacker flushing Pete Thomas to his right, disrupting the rhythm. Clemson's really up the pressure on quarterbacks now here in the second half. Well, in a two-man route. I mean, because of the pressure, because of all the, you know, guys that are in the face of the quarterback the whole time you have to do that you have to keep more guys in you got you know six guys covering two guys in a route there's the math again it's pretty easy you're impressing me tonight my math skills unbelievable Bill Baldwin hits off a booming punt that drives Adam Humphreys back to his 25 and he steps out of bounds and to your point too about the math not adding up you also can't afford to take chances that deep in your own end see if yeah. they can flip field position after that 52 yard punt tigers have it when you come back espn college football prime time brought to you by kingsford charcoal don't forget Kingsford Charcoal and everything else you need for game day tailgating. Available at Walmart. And Frostbrew Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Having a look at the James B. Hunt Jr. Library, they've got a robot-driven book bot in there that delivers books. How, how does that compare to the way they delivered books at the Georgia Library, David? I didn't spend much time in the library. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Does he have a library that, card? That shocks me. I could jam like that guy, though. In a 13-7 game, you better belly up here in the second half in a potential upset for North Carolina State. Roderick McDowell breaks a tackle. Good pickup running through. Two more Wolfpack defenders. Picked up 12, maybe 13. It'll be a first down for the Tigers. And this is when you see them start to pick that tempo up. Pick bit. the tempo up, but they've had success running the football. This is a run-first offense most of the time. I think they need to stick to this a little bit more. Give McDowell some touches. And going to have movement on the left tackle as Taj Boyd was looking to the sideline. Oh, 
Brandon Thomas, who was a first-team All-ACC player a year ago. You know, we talked about that tempo increasing this year for Chad Morris, and in the offseason, he tweaked the verbiage in the play calling, making it shorter, allowing Clemson to call more plays. Boyd in the roll, by his high, pick up maybe five. Sammy Watkins with another catch. That'll be ten for Sammy tonight. Dante Johnson knocked him out of bounds. One thing that doesn't need to be tweaked is throwing the ball to number two. Just keep slinging it to him and let him make plays. They're moving him all over the field, trying to get as many touches as possible. One catch shy of his career high set last year against North Carolina State. Back to the ground, McDowell hit and dragged down, coming roaring through was Robert Caldwell. Junior college transfer who's learning to play in the middle in the box and does a good job there. Yeah, he's very inexperienced, he barely played on defense last year, had a monster game against Richmond. Good instincts here, finding the football, slipping the block from tight end second here. Slipping the block, my gosh. There's a... <laughs> Bad effort at a block right there. Wolfpack's got eight tackles for loss tonight. They're looking for a sack. Boyd's running to the edge. Can he get to the first down marker? He cannot. North Carolina State's going to force him into a fourth down. The last guy delivering the hit was Niles Clark. Clark's a redshirt freshman from Marietta, Georgia. And they forced Clemson into another fourth down situation. NC State's defense yeah. again showing up in critical down and distances and situations. Their offense has been sputtering here early in the second half, but forcing early punts by Clemson getting the football back. Can't say enough about defensive coordinator Dave Huxtable's group. Bradley Pinion to punt it away to Rashard Smith. <laughs> Smith makes the catch inside his own 20, and once again, NC State with less than desirable field position, but they do come up with another stop. So how strong is the ACC? Best of the BCS era, the rise of this conference coming up on our Thursday thesis. And does Clemson's performance tonight help the cause or hurt it? North Carolina State has the ball on its own 17. 7.43 remaining here in the third quarter. Number three, Clemson in a fight. Tigers with a 13-7 lead. Fly sweep, Underwood trying to turn the corner. He's got great speed. Underwood turning it on. 40, still on his feet. Can he stay in bounds? Ryan Underwood headed for the house. He goes into the end zone and they signal touchdown, but it appears that he was marked out of bounds. He stepped on the sideline for the second time tonight on that fly sweep play. And it'll come back, still a good gain. He'll pick up 36 instead of 83. 83 would have been preferable. The best run teams don't always block up front. They block on the perimeter. And a great block by the wide receiver sprung Underwood. Take a look at his feet here. See if he stepped out. Ooh. Now, see, I, I think a couple steps ago, he might have stepped on the line. Really? They'll, they'll, yeah. They'll have to have indisputable this, video this evidence. This be the best angle right here. I thought maybe... Right. No, he's up. No, he's, he's good. In the, right foot. Uh, this may come... was ruled out on the sideline right here at first down. So you need indisputable video evidence right when they there. review this. Go back. Run it forward a little bit. The next step, the right foot, right, the next right foot. Keep going. One more frame. Right there is going to be the closest one. He steps down. He turns uh, no, I think that's it. I mean, I from, see, I see some, from this vantage point, you see green. You need indisputable video evidence to overturn this, and the call was touchdown. Yeah, the call was no, the call was out. out. The call was out. He stepped out of bounds in the 47. Okay. The official at the end of the run signaled touchdown, but the. Wow. You know, Brian Underwood, a guy they've tried to kind of get going in this offense. A couple of explosive plays just inches away wow. from touchdowns each time. North Carolina State just misses the touchdown. It'll be an incomplete pass. A second 10. Crowd's not liking it. We take one more look Ooh, from high right. above and see if Underwood hit that white line. Yeah. Great hustle by Quan and Christian there. Maybe that tug on the jersey just kind of got him off balance just slightly. Football's a game of inches. He's not out there. It's hard to know. tell. Yeah, uh, he's not out. Yeah, from I there think it he's in. in. From I think, there it looked in. I think that's a miss, gentlemen. Wow. That's, wow. that's a tough, tough break from North Carolina State. 
see if they can make it a moot point. Thomas under a lot of pressure from Corey Crawford trying to dump it to the back. And Corey Crawford's having himself a game tonight. You know, David, you talked earlier about how much he's improved yeah. this season, but he's an every down guy with a tremendous motor who's a great compliment to Vic Beasley on the other side. Again, Clemson's pass rush so much better here in the second half than it was early in the game. So a third down and 10. 0 for 7 on third downs. This is where just Pete Thomas has to make a play. Instead, he puts the football on the ground. Clemson had the best shot at it. Let's see if they held on to it at the bottom of the pile. Vic Beasley was the one that knocked it out. What a devastating turn of events for North Carolina State. They have a touchdown call back because he believed Underwood stepped out of bounds and then heartbreak as Thomas has the ball knocked away by Vic Beasley and Clemson comes up with a turnover. When you have great speed, you have to respect it. And Beasley goes upfield hard for a couple steps, you know, freezes Tooney for a second, then turns speed into power. Great job coming underneath and feeling where the quarterback was. And, Great rush. And Joe Tooney, who's facing off against him, is only 286 pounds. Well, and the dude really just moved to physical. left tackle exactly. like three days ago, yeah. too. So I'll give him a little bit of slack. But as a quarterback, you have to keep two hands on the football. Better yeah. ball security in the pocket. Ramon Hopper had it, and North Carolina State, Art Norman making the play. We talked just about Vic Beasley. Corey Crawford, Art Norman's having himself a ball game at defensive end for NC State as well. In fact, Mike Rowe is a backup defensive end. They've had a couple guys at that position make plays tonight. It's just a good job staying at home, staying on his backside. Take a call at happy. Norman's had a good game. Ty's Boyd firing. And a dart. Bryant. Puts it right on his man, Martavis Bryant. That's makes it. the catch. It'll bring up it'll bring up third down. I want to go back to that touchdown a minute ago that was ruled out of bounds. A replay booth is telling us that outside the five-yard line is a call on the field. So obviously that was well outside the five-yard line. It appeared from our replays that that was a, a miss, call. a miss by the officials on the field, and it was a tough one for North Carolina State. Taj Boyd converts the third down and gets inside the 35. Let's take another look at that at that last play, or not the last play, but the touchdown run that wasn't for North Carolina State. Underwood in, 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 in. in, in. in. Keep saying in, because he went all the way to the end zone he did. Wow. without stepping out. And Justin Burris is down on the field, the cornerback from North Carolina State. So a tough break for Underwood. See if the Wolfpack can rise up. Let's do some serious curb appeal. All right, Scott, boy, what a performance Mike Evans had at shootout in College Station between the Crimson Tide and the Aggies last Saturday. Number three team in the country, Clemson's on the move after getting a stroke of good fortune. So last possession by NC State. If you're Clemson, you just got a great break on that Underwood run. Now you got to make NC State pay for that. If you can score a touchdown here, go up 20 to 7, you can take a lot of air out of this building here in the second half. Boy, firing for the end zone. He's got Brian out there. Touchdown, Clemson. A 30-yard strike. Okay, all of those slashes, let's see if they're going to throw a flag on Bryant. A lot of times that's an automatic one. You talked about how NC State defensively had to play with great eye discipline. All the misdirection from Clemson. There's a fake handoff, a fake reserve. It, it freezes the secondary and allows the six foot five Bryant to get into the second level. Those are the explosive plays NC State told themselves they could not allow in this game. And as Chandler Canzaro puts through the extra point, he now becomes the all-time leading scorer in Clemson history. Martavis Bryant just scored the touchdown, and Clemson now has a little breathing room. The crowd here at Carter-Finley still, still
still stewing over that touchdown that wasn't by Brian Underwood. But Clemson is one of the powerhouses in the ACC. They're ranked third in the country. And our Thursday thesis is the ACC at its best point in the BCS era, which started in 1998. They, they had the impressive victories over the SEC. Yep. In September, they've at least set a foundation. Yeah, they've gotten off to a great start. you got to give them credit for that. But there is a lot of football left to play. they still got to win some games down the stretch to be relevant at the end of the year. Yeah, and I think that once you start comparing conferences, everybody leans toward the SEC, rightfully so, because of what they've done. They're not second. You know, the Pac-12, I think, is the second-best conference in college football. But you start talking about the ACC and gaining credibility, that's what they've done. But what you talked about early in the show, I think, is true. Maryland needs to step up. You need those upper tier teams. Those upper tier teams have shown they can compete on a national level. But what about that next level with UNC and Miami if they can continue to win? Then I think you start to prove your merit as a conference. On college football final, we spin that ACC wheel of destiny having a little fun with them because <laughs> you could never predict anything. Everybody was kind of the same and there wasn't no. that powerful upper middle tier. And every conference, generally speaking, is only going to have a couple of legitimate national championship contenders. But this is what the ACC has done to lay a foundation perhaps to be in that discussion if we get to a one-loss scenario with Clemson's victory over Georgia, Miami's victory against Florida and Virginia Tech lost the game against Alabama handily but the other ones I think the story will be written with those three games those rivalry games yeah. coming at the end of the year I've always given the ACC credit because they schedule tough non-conference games early in the season against the SEC and late in the season against the SEC but they got to keep winning those games because since 2005 when Virginia Tech and Miami joined the conference you know they've never had a team finish the regular season 12 and 0 or even 11 and 1 what about, what about BC Games. Bowls too. The 3 and 13 the BCS era. Pete Thomas firing it deep and it's broken up. He was looking for Marquez Valdez scantling and Sean Breland was there to knock it away. So guys, if you're an ACC team and you have two losses at the end of the regular season, you're automatically disqualified from BCS National Championship discussion. So there's still a lot of football left. Clemson got a great run. You know, you look at the, the way these teams have finished. Some of them have been very good teams, but more often than not, they've lost those big non-conference games early and they've been nicked up in conference play. So is it different this year? We understand why, but yeah. is it different now? Well, I think this year changes a little bit because if you're talking about one loss teams from the SEC, Georgia could be a one loss team from the SEC and Clemson's already beat them. I mean, I think that's already a good feather in your cap and a big win for your conference. But yeah, there's got to be more wins and more quality wins down the road. And Clemson's got to beat South Carolina. Yeah. There's another one that we see every single year and Dabo and then the boys hadn't been able to do it. Well, last year when Florida State came into this stadium and lost to NC State even though they were a one loss team because of the they relative were done. yeah relative lack of strength in the conference regardless of what would have happened later on against Florida among one loss teams they were finished now maybe if some of the teams perform a little better create that upper middle class that won't be the case this time here is the case of Pete Thomas completing the pass to the freshman Valdez Scantling and he picks up the first down in the first third down conversion of the night and they go to their best yards. I think this is their best wide receiver. He's a true freshman in Marquez Valdez Scantling. We haven't really called his name tonight. Just gonna run the underneath. Look who the best blocker cross. is. <laughs> we'll take it. And he was out in front, gets the pick from the ref against bump and run versus Bashan Breland. But here's a guy now that needs to have his presence felt here in the second half. Hey, hey David, after after calling back that touchdown, you could argue the officials owed him once. Well, I, was, I was telling him not to go near the sidelines. Bad things happened here in the sidelines for them. Pete Thomas, he's got a little room. He's not the nippiest runner. He gets inside the 40. Inside the four-minute mark here in the third quarter, North Carolina State trying to push a little bit closer in our Thursday thesis about the relative improvement and strength of the ACC. Goes here. Can Clemson go undefeated this year? You can reply to add ESPN CFB. Simple question. Can the Tigers finish unblemished? And make their case to play in the BCS championship game to final BCS championship game before we go to the 14th playoff. And I think we're going to have a full start. And not much the gentleman who strikes through the rest of the night is going to make fans happy here. All start, number 82, offense, five yard penalty, still came out. We heard Sam at the start of the second half. She talked to head coach Dave Dorn. He said, we got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot with penalties. Again, 
Here they are now moving backward after a big explosive play from the true freshman wide receiver. You can't have those mental mistakes. Second and nine from the 44 of Clemson. Tony Creasy was looking for a crease and might have had one if not for Spencer Shuey. She wow. who recovered the fumble a moment ago made a big time. And you play. see Vic Beasley giving him a pat on the head, thank saying, you. "Thank you, brother," because Vic Beasley came way upfield, ran right by the football. You're going to see this right over here. He misses it. There is a huge lane right now oh, man. to hit, and Shuey, who's got tremendous instincts, had 18 tackles against Georgia, makes a big, big tackle. She's good. Wolfpack in need of its second, third down conversion. They may get it if Trent can get up field. I thought at first that was Shadrach Thornton. He said it was Quentin Payton. No, but you were right. You were saying if he get up field, mm -hmm. catch that ball, get north get south. Up field. He does. Two straight third down conversions for the Wolfpack. Clemson defensively on these third downs playing way off in big zones. They're going to have to start challenging the wide receivers and taking away these easy underneath routes. Old pack on the move. This is a great looking drive right now, answering after Clemson's last score. And this time, fly sweep action, nothing doing, making the play a Shaq loss in the freshman from Central this, South Carolina. This big boy's got some upside. He's gonna be really good. Watch him shoot the gap right there. Real quick. Get skinny if that's possible for a 270-pound <laughs> freshman. True freshman, too. Yeah, that, that's the next. Daquan Bowers, you know, next defensive line that you really like. Good, good quickness, plays the game hard. Venables has got some players up front this year. He's got depth up front this year as well. And the defense, David, has been the missing link to the championship yep. puzzle for Clemson in the last couple of years. They look a lot better this year. Thomas underneath. Underwood has it. The great speed for Underwood. And this time he officially does go out of bounds. He's going to be a little bit short of the first down. And defense was the reason you said, David, you said typically Clemson defenses of the past with the way they played in the first half, they, they would have been behind by 10 points. You're talking about being down and having to press a little bit more, but the defense being a little bit more physical and making you earn it, a little bit more discipline. Absolutely. Now, this defense has a weakness, and it's their secondary. And right now, you're seeing if your quarterback can have time, you can make plays, and that's what you're seeing that you know, he's been afforded the opportunity. So you're talking about being aggressive, David. Right now, third and short, you got to play press coverage. you got to challenge these guys and make them earn it, like you said. And going into a tight formation, they have to hurry to get the snap off, and I think they might have, might have moved early, and they did. Oh, man. Wow, self inflicted. Calling third and seven is so much different than calling third and two. So the playbook is constricted now for Matt Canada. After these self inflicted wounds that we've seen all night. <laughs> you did see state fans, two or three of them covering their eyes, almost afraid to look. All right, so if you're Clemson right now, no shallow crosses, nothing underneath. You've been, you've been hurt on that play three times on this drive. You've got to be looking for it right now for Clemson. Two times in a row they've converted on third down. Thomas got a little antsy, and he went down. Shaq lost him again, making his presence felt. I think the biggest improvement on this defense that Dave was just talking about is the depth on the defensive line. They have a consistent pass rush now with Vic Beasley, Corey Crawford. Now you got the true freshman, Shaq Lawson, with his second tackle for a loss on this series. Great job with his inside hand pulling the tackle by after he got too far upfield instead of leaving all that room that you saw Beasley did a little while ago. And that sack by Lawson is going to be the final play of the third quarter. And when the fourth quarter starts, it'll be fourth down and nine for the Wolfpack, a decision to make. They are just inside the 35. Fourth quarter going to get underway. Nicholas Sadie's going to try a 48-yard field goal. This is precisely the distance from which he beat Richmond in the Wolfpack's last game, kicking it through with 33 ticks remaining. He'll try to cut the lead to 10. Sadie's already hit from 49 tonight. It's on the way, and it is no good. 
State. He pushed it just outside the upright, and the drive from North Carolina State comes up empty. An opportunity to gain some momentum back for NC State. You see Dabo Swinney fired up. He knows that's big. His offense just marched down the field. The previous possession scored a touchdown. Now an opportunity to really seize the momentum after that missed field goal, if you can put some points on the board here. And one of the impressive things I thought week one with them was their ability to run the football against Georgia in the fourth quarter. They really, those body blows added up. The Dow got down. See if Clemson can continue to exert himself on the ground. They'll start running it on the ground. McDowell picking his way across the 35 to the 36. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows. Couple of games available across the nation. Michigan going on the road to take on UConn. Devin Gardner had a rough game against Akron. They were very fortunate to come out of there with a victory against Terry Bowden's team. And Kansas State and Texas. Kansas State lost its opener. Texas has lost two in a row to BYU and Ole Miss. Mac Brown has been feeling the heat of the discontent among some of the fans. You can see if Texas can get its Big 12 schedule off to a winning start as they open up against Kansas State in the primary culprit for the Longhorns struggles the run defense yeah Ooh. you're, you're going to look to find a lot of improvement in this game you know I, I kind of gave them a pass against Ole Miss it, it, you couldn't expect them to look like the 85 Bears against an Ole Miss offense that is explosive what about BYU especially a week after they just fired their defensive coordinator so did they now, get a Greg pass Robinson, for the BYU game no they don't but I got against Ole Miss I gave them a pass but they got to look a lot better Saturday night Pass, huh? While they are attending to David Beasley in the left guard for Clemson, we'll take a break. Clemson leading North Carolina State 20 to 7. David Beasley, the left guard, walked off the field. He's rolled up on by his teammate, Shaq Anthony. Kalen Davis moved into his position as Clemson looks at a second and six. He's batted into the air and knocked away. And Taj Boyd gets on it. I didn't hear a whistle, so it very well might have been a backward pass. It was Mike Rose who got a hand on it. They're calling it incomplete now, so yeah. they'll bring it back to the original uh, line of scrimmage. I actually thought this was a forward pass. And so did I. I just didn't hear a whistle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it looked like he was throwing it forward. You know, interesting now, Beasley got hurt. We just talked about how Clemson's offensive line doing a better job in pass protection here in the second half. That's given Taj Boyd an opportunity to find explosive plays. He's their most physical offensive lineman now not in the game playing against a very active NC State front. McDowell looking for the first down marker, and he gets it with a nifty move, making the defender miss. It was Brandon Pittman who got faked out of his shoes. But well, we started talking the game about Taj Boyd making the easy throw, making the throw underneath, not making the home run ball. Great job giving it to his athlete in space and letting him make a play. I thought he danced too much, but <laughs> one, two, three step <laughs> worked out well. Zach Brooks, tough run up close to midfield. You know, I've really liked watching Roderick McDowell early this season. I know there were a lot of question marks after Andre Ellington left this team a year ago. Yeah. Arguably the fastest running back in the country, aside from Anthony Thomas, maybe. Very explosive. But this guy right here, I mean, he's got some explosiveness to him, too. He can make you miss. He's going to be a good weapon for this offense. Roderick's story is one of perseverance. Boy, being chased. Boyd showing some wheels, gets to the edge. He's going to step out of bounds just before the first down marker. Roderick McDowell at one time earlier in his career thought about leaving Clemson. He's a graduate student. High school coach prevailed on him. He said, is this about making people back home think you're a big star or sticking it out and being part of something at Clemson? This is a young man who was born with a club foot. He has overcome that difficulty and is having a terrific final season with the Tigers so far. Zach Brooks gets the first down to about the 42 of NC State. Plays amping up. Remember, remember they've run a lot of plays. They've had long drives. Yep. Defensive linemen start to get a little bit more worn out. But these are the teams that in the fourth quarter when they can salt away games. And they, they narrow the margins and it's to be had. It's demoralizing, David, too. Yeah. I mean, because NC State knows their best chance on defense is that D line. All of a sudden, these white jerseys start getting pushed late in the game. You start losing confidence. You gotta start throwing more guys in the box, too. Boy, down the middle, has a man. It's complete inside the 20. It is another play for Jamone Hopper. And that happens, by the way. The running game helping out the passing game. Play action now is a major weapon. And Taj Boyd 
so much more accurate when he has time. And that window's open more because the linebackers cheated up for just a second. You saw, you saw that. Back to McDowell on the ground. McDowell saw a pickup over the left side, stopped by Hakeem Jones. It'll be critical all season long that Clemson's able to have this guy to balance. And, and, you know, again, in the red zone, we always say it, the best red zone offense is the ones that can run the football. You got a great option in McDowell, you got a great option in Taj Boyd. The option will be Boyd this time. He is swallowed up by a sea of red. DJ Green was first there, but he had a lot of help from his friends. Now DJ's ahead to the sideline, hobbling a little bit. All right, we've seen Martavius Bryant make a lot of big plays here in the second half. Struggled in the first half, struggled early against Georgia. That six foot five target down here in the red zone has to be big. He gets man to man coverage, but you gotta be physical. He's gotta make a play. Here he is at the bottom of the screen. Going to Bryant, back shoulder. Bryant grabbed it over the top. Touchdown. Now that's what Clemson's looking for from number one. It's what DeAndre Hopkins did over and over. How many times do we see that play one on one? Just put it near the guy. He has the most potential of any of the wide receivers according to the staff, according to the staff which is shocking considering you've got Sammy Watkins. He's their <laughs> fastest receiver. He runs a 4-4. They say he's faster than Watkins. When your frame is six foot five, and I'm a quarterback and I got one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to you, brother. For a man that's had struggles catching the ball when he wasn't guarded to make that catch? Woo! Well, Davo's going to try to make it a full three touchdown, three extra point lead at 26 7. Try to get it to 28. Boyd on the roll. And they'll have to settle for 26, although there is a flag down. Robert Caldwell stopped Boyd on the roll. Holding number 78. A penalty climb. Try is no good. So the lead for Clemson is 19. The Tigers got a break with Underwood being called for stepping out of bounds, but to the Tigers' credit, they have answered the bell with big-time plays, none bigger than this grab from Martavis Bryant, 26-7 Clemson. Applebee's. ESPN College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Applebee's two for twenty dollars menu just got even better with the new honey pepper grill and in part by the experience Buick lease it's a new lease on luxury Clemson got pushed in the first half but Taj Boyd really picked up his play late in the first half and he's been pretty sharp here in the second and the Tigers ranked third in the country, their highest ranking in 25 years, with a 19-point lead, just under 11 and a half minutes to play here in Raleigh. Martavis Bryant with a couple of second-half touchdowns. Roderick McDowell has been solid on the ground, 13 carries, 71 yards. Devil Swinney exhorting his team to finish the drill now as North Carolina State is in desperate times. Jonathan Alston. He hasn't had much room to run on kickoff returns. Once again, Wolfpack backed up deep in its own end after a kickoff. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotel. Saturday night on the Bayou. Auburn and LSU starts at 7.45 Eastern Time. You can see it live on Watch ESPN. Find out just how good Gus Malzahn's team is yep. in his first year. Yep. Mettenberger getting his first taste this year. Of SEC competition, but boy, he's he's been sharp in the early and, going. And under Cam Cameron, that LSU offense is so much less predictable this season. Throwing it on running downs, running it on throwing downs. Been a nice job keeping defenses off balance. Pete Thomas pulls it, picks up about four. You know the one thing about LSU in the off season. I thought my head was getting ready to explode because so many people were saying nobody's talking about LSU that everybody was talking about LSU and everybody was right. They, they, they look like they've added a different dimension. We didn't, know, always we didn't know what was going to happen with Camp Camp. We've seen other guys come in and Les Miles seems like he didn't want to loosen up the string still. Thomas, plenty of room to get to the first down marker and he does and he'll slide down just short of the 30. 
You know, but I still want to see it against a good team. Yeah. I still want to see it. You want to see it against Auburn. It, but it, it obviously, an identity makes them so much better. You know what's fun to watch on tape? When they don't run into an eight-man box. Yeah. Yeah. When they actually throw the football. Usually in the past, they just hammer it just to hammer it. Auburn's giving up a lot of passing yards. Yeah. I've been impressed with LSU's game. defense, too, guys. They only returned three starters this year. They've only given up five touchdowns in three games. Give from the inside to Matt Days. The freshman has a good pickup on first down. You know, guys, going back, there was a Twitter question earlier. Can Clemson go undefeated this year? And I think this year has to be the year that they do. Back to the ground days. Why this year? The sense of urgency. Taj Boyd isn't going to be here next year. Sammy Watkins is not going to be here next year. They might not have Chad Morris here next year calling plays on offense. He'll be on everybody's short list. They've got 18 starters that are juniors and seniors. The throw was out to Rashad Smith. It was Darius Robinson who came in to make the play. There's a flag way down in the secondary. And they got some games left, but you take a look at the schedule. They got Florida State and Georgia Tech at home. And I know a lot of fans out there. Yeah, nearly seventy percent disagree but with you. This has to be the year. The sense of urgency has to go up. It would be only the second time in their 117-year history they played in a national championship. Illegal substitution, defense, five-yard penalty, result of penalty, the first down. That was when he pleading his case and Tigers nabbed for illegal substitution. David, what are you thinking? Clemson go undefeated this year. They can't. They can't. I mean, I, I'm not going to put say the odds are for them, but they can't. Um, you look at the FSU game, I think FSU's defense is probably a little bit stronger than Clemson's, and you look at the offense with Jameis Winston, it's been pretty good, so maybe that's a scoring shootout there, and then South Carolina, they got to play that one. Uh, Rashad Smith, who played a little quarterback in high school, wanted to throw it. Makes a couple of Tigers look silly in the backfield and turned a potentially disastrous situation into a gain of about five. On the flip side, guys, it, it's really important that NC State wins a lot of games this year, too. And I know people think it's a rebuilding year. It's Dave Dorn's first season. But they got eight home games. They're a young team. They got to capitalize on that. They need the extra 15 bowl practices at the end of the season. Thomas gets rid of it just in time. The no game, but he did avoid the loss. Marquez Valdez Scantling slipped to catch. Brady Jarrett was one of fine pressure. Those extra bowl practices will be important oh, for North Carolina State, but the other thing is you go look into the future. They have Jacoby Brissett, transfer quarterback yep. from Florida that they're very excited about. He's already established himself as a team leader for Doran, who barring a miracle rally in the last eight and a half minutes, is going to suffer his first home loss as a head coach. And Corey Crawford is out of his stance a little bit quickly. Corey's trying to save his draw and off. We'll they, see if, yeah. if they agree. I agree. Ball start, offense, 254, five yards, still third down. It wasn't the jump by the offensive tackle, but when he starts leaning, that's <laughs> not legal. He's not allowed to ease out of his stance, but he sees Crawford coming off that edge. He's like, Woof, well, he, I better kick quick. He's been beaten around the edge a couple times already tonight, whether it's yeah. Vic Beasley, whether it's Corey Crawford, Shaq Lawson. It, it's been difficult on that left side. Yeah, For it's a his, guy playing his third, third time practice. out there, I know. Five false starts tonight for NC State. Thomas going to take a shot, throwing it up, batted into the air. And after it was batted, Darius Robinson got hold of Chuck Smith. But you have to remember, the ball had been deflected at that point. The crowd was wanting some type of interference. Kind of hit him in the helmet. Been you know, we know Clemson defensively has a better pass rush this year. I think the next step is finding playmakers at cornerback. You know, getting the depth to be able to match up mano a mano across the board is a huge piece of the puzzle for Brent Venables and this defense yep. for them to reach the maximum efficiency and be as dominant as, as they want to be. They're yep. so much smarter. They're so much tougher. They play harder. They're more disciplined than they were like, even a year ago. The fourth and ten. Doran's going to try to get it. Thomas throws it down the middle, and they do get it. And a catch by Brian Underwood. <laughs> Underwood's had two carries on jet sweeps or end arounds. Could have had over 100 yards rushing, but he still made some big plays. You'll love to see this from NC State. Game's starting to get out of hand, but they're still competing. That was a really tough throw by B. Thomas in, in duress. 
Thomas says it deflected by Vic Beasley, second and ten. But I think the Twitter question with the perception, we talk about it, but I mean, even, you know, having the Urban Dictionary Clemsoning in there, and it's just been talked about for so long about them losing some of those games they shouldn't, that people around the country still talk about that and still believe that, even though last year, there were only two losses with the top 10 teams. And it's two in a row, deflected one by each end. First, Vic Beasley got one, now Tavares Barnes. And Reese, I, I know you've mentioned this, you find the whole term Clemson and archaic. I do, I've declared it archaic. I think people should still talk about it. Why? Because it just happened two years ago. It, last year was good. Why don't we call it Florida Stating? They've been, they've done it more than Clemson. But, the, fa but the fact that Clemson has done it very recently, Georgia Tech, whether but it was NC last State. Year they lost to two teams. But it was just teams. two years ago, guys. They got 70 hung on them in the Orange Bowl. That 17. Now that's a fair point. Okay. <laughs> there are Clemson fans watching saying, boy, we got so close, all the way to almost the seven and a half minute mark of the fourth quarter before one of those guys so, brought up the Orange so Bowl. So if you want to change the perception, you just got to keep winning. And they've done a very good job of that say, here What's the other side, man? Boy, SEC man. here. Sure. They've, they've no, had their... absolutely. And they beat two top ten SEC teams in consecutive games. First non-SEC team to do that. There's a lot of big games oh, left on the see, schedule you, for Clemson. Oh, they did this, they did this, they did this. But the, two years ago, they exactly. lost. Exactly. It was just two years ago, David. That's not long enough for me to stop saying they Clemson. They do. And Clemson is running guys off the field, and they call a timeout this time before being called for a penalty. Dave Doran going to go for it again on fourth down, try to draw a little bit closer and keep his team fighting. Down 19 in the fourth quarter, number three rolling toward a victory. Sports Center follows us, and it is in fact already started on ESPN News. Texas interested in Nick Saban. That's Who is it? Came out today. Well, that, that's a very good point. Reed taking on Philly. Dodgers going to the postseason. John Butchagross, Steve Levy have it all for you on SportsCenter, which is currently on ESPN News. Fourth down play coming from North Carolina State as they try to keep this drive alive. Put a little window dressing on the score, perhaps give Clemson a little threat. Pete Thomas throwing underneath, got his man complete still on his feet. And it's to Michael Ramos making the catch and getting the first down, second, fourth down conversion on this drive. Driving head coach Davo swing crazy there and had it in the break. He was screaming at his defense, telling him to get this offense off the field. That's the second time now on this drive you just mentioned. You know, he wants them to finish. You always hear coaches talk about that. Play the game till there's zeros on the clock. Thomas steps away from pressure. He's firing low to the outside. In one place, hoping maybe Underwood would be able to catch it, but not putting the ball in jeopardy. And it'll be second and ten. It's tough when you have four downs on offense every time, too, man. That is easy. You want to change the lineman downfield rule? Do you want to change the? You want to go to the go Canadian point. rule and only say, have three downs? Go to go down. we, got, we got enough Canadians up here in the booth. We need <laughs> all about the three downs. Beasley. Yeah. Beasley's back there again. He tried to throw it past him to Matt Days. It'll be third and ten. You know, this is something now. Offenses will have to game plan Clemson so much differently now because of this pass rush. So yeah. you're going to start seeing a lot of screens. You're going to start seeing a lot more quick throws. You're going to have to move the pocket because Vic Beasley, Corey Crawford, Shaq Lawson will be coming each and every week. This is a legit pass rush. Third and ten. Oh, behind his man, he's looking for about as scantling. It'll be fourth and ten, and we have a hat trick worth of fourth down conversions for the Wolfpack. You know, in years past, it's been okay for this defense. You know, this defense really has been one that just hoped to get a couple of stops to give the ball back to the offense and win some shootouts. That's not going to be good enough for Brent Venables and Clemson anymore. This game last year was 62-48. Yeah. Speaking of, of shootouts, <laughs> now NC State had a had an NFL quarterback with Mike Glennon. Tars Boyd accounted for eight touchdowns in that game, an ACC record. That's why 62, they flipped the numbers, 26 up there for the Tigers. Need to get 10, completed pass, and another fourth down conversion, and it's Ramos again. He's converted the last two fourth downs. I thought the freshman just waiting until he turns up big. 
And you can see that there's youth on NC State's offense. We've talked about that, but it, they're talented. They're just really young. There's Ramos, a big, tall, six foot three receiver. Well, these guys fighting right now late in this game. You know they have more fourth down conversions than third down conversions tonight. Vic Beasley comes in, going to put a stop to that. At least going forward on first down. Too good to, cut, to just block with one guy. And I know the guy blocking him isn't used to playing left tackle, but that's another difference offenses are going to have to game plan. You're going to have to chip yeah, him with running backs, good. use tight ends to help your left tackle as yeah, well. Yeah, but it's been, it's been speed. It's been speed to counter. It's been speed to power. He's been showing off. You know, playing his hands off cut blocks and showing the awareness to, to read the screens. He's really showing you the full repertoire. Quick pass out. Now taking a big hit, but staying forward is Braylon Cherry. Vic Beasley has three sacks and four fumbles. Broken up a couple of passes by knocking them down yep. tonight. Last year, he had three sacks and forced a fumble. He had eight yeah. sacks last year and 288 snaps. Yeah, he, he, he didn't even play on first and second down. Well, he couldn't last year. He's added, you know, 15 pounds to his frame. They say he's the pound for pound strongest guy on the team. He's really done a good job playing the run and being more physical. He couldn't put him on the field first down last year. He stayed inside the 15. Ooh, Beasley. Beasley was almost as if he was being held. Breland broke it up. So that'll be two of 15 on third down now, Man. and they'll try to make it four for four on fourth down in this drive. Now he's just showing off. Now he wants to show you the spin move. Show you a little bit of everything tonight, man. It's again, uh, uh, after Jadavian Clowney, to me, he's the quickest off the ball in the country. Will Sutton is quick off the ball Will for Sutton's a big quick point. Too. I'm talking about defensive end. Anthony Barr is quick off the ball. Not a defensive end. He's an outside backer, Not defensive end. Same thing. Come on. on. Well, this is the 20th play of the drive, and it's another fourth down. Thomas. Do you have enough wheels to get to the first down marker? He does. Let's convert another fourth down. This is going to drive defensive coordinator Brett Venables crazy. He was very upset with his defense late in the Georgia game on a quick two-minute drive. But they just carved them up down the field and scored. One area of uh, improvement that we're now seeing, Clemson, you've got to close games out on defense. Well, this is your basic 21-play drive coming. Not exactly the two-minute drill. 21st play of the drive. We run fourth down every time it counts. Thomas. Yeah, and you know what? Right in the gut. When, when it's eight minutes left on the clock and you're up by three scores, you want a 21 play drive that can chew up all the clock, knock your head silly. Yeah. Go ahead. But how about getting him off the field on fourth down? That's all I'm saying. Hey, how about the time ticking down and you get a W? I know you want to get off the field, but you're making him earn it. You're not giving up any big plays. W is important, but again, these are areas of coaching and concern. It's never okay to get up a 21-play no, no, no. Ws are the only thing that's important right now. 21 21-play drive's not good, David. It's not good. How about a 22-play drive? That's not good either. All right. 22's coming. Thomas. Has to throw it away. Vic Beasley pressuring. You know they're not going to convert this third down. It's only fitting on this drive that they're facing go a fourth and goal you know, to see whether the drive is successful or unsuccessful. Pete Thomas has been very resilient already. I mean, a guy that went to Colorado State played for Steve Fairchild. Fairchild gets fired, so he transfers here to NC State to play for Tom or Tom O'Brien and Dana Bible. They get fired. You know, they bring in Brandon Mitchell from Arkansas. They bring in Jacoby Brissett. He wasn't even a starter in the first game. He's played very well tonight. He's been a good leader. Made some plays. And third down conversion into a touchdown for North Carolina State with 3.50 remaining in the game. The Wolfpack, an opportunity to cut it to 12. Spread them out. All the wide receivers all over the field. You got quads on one side, you got another receiver on the other side. Great job to run the quarterback draw. Yeah, I think they can use him down the road more in the running game, in the design running game. He, he's, yeah. he showed the wheels in the last two games. Now, you don't always have to substitute well, Sheriff's in. I'm not saying he's wheels. I'm not saying he's Brandon Mitchell. I'm just saying, you know. I'm not saying, but you're saying. You can just kind of open the playbook a little bit. A 23 play. 84-yard drive that ate up more than seven and a half minutes and cut the deficit to 12, 26-14 inside four minutes to play.
And those are two most recent examples of what people like to say are Clemsoning. I submit that plays like that against LSU and this against Georgia in the clutch have now rendered that term archaic. Sure, it used to be true that this is a program now that's been ranked in the top 25 for 33 consecutive weeks. Only six teams have been ranked in the top 25. Go ahead, Jesse Palmer. Spit all over the Clemson fans again. When they were ranked in the top 25, they quote-unquote Clemson three times. How many years ago was that? It was it was 16 games ago. That's my point. It just happened. And if they go through this season, they don't do it, then Reese, you can have your archaic Clemson definition oh. walk through. All of those teams on that list. Ball is loose. NC State had a shot at it for a moment. They just didn't have a body close enough to grab it, and Clemson will take over. And two touchdown catches in the second half, and now Martavis Bryant also recovers. The onside kick attempt from North Carolina State is 26-14 as we have three and a half minutes to go. So we'll continue to debate about <laughs> the state of Clemsoning. I think this team's different. I think it's because of defense. The question is, now look, everybody's not going to play a razor sharp game every time out. David, in your judgment, is this a national championship containing team? I think it is. I think they've, they've already got the big win against Georgia to start the season. They went on the road for the first time. Didn't play as great as you'd like to see, but I think with the firepower they have, with the pass rush that they have in the ACC, in a conference that, you know, it's Florida State and them as far as talent-wise. I think they are. I think Clemson's for real. Those boys running it. I got to tell you, I'm not sure I'd do that right now. Well, I wouldn't. I'd let him get tackled. Yeah. I'd hand it to somebody else. Guys, I, I think they can be a national contender, too. My biggest two question marks are the defense. I mean, NC State's not the greatest show on turf. That's true. They're yeah. going to see Florida State. They're going to see South. We'll see some better South Carolina, better offenses down the road. Martavius Bryant needs to continue to yep. emerge outside. They need a compliment to Sammy Watkins. If he does, and this offense can hit on all cylinders, then they're very, very dangerous. Well, I think their offensive line is a legitimate concern, too. I mean, Boyd can cover it up a little bit, but you saw Chad Morris's game plan, it seemed to me like they wanted to play action, take shots, make good plays. They weren't able to do it because their offensive line couldn't hold up in pass protection. DJ Howard with the carry. It'll bring up but third down. But the schedule down. has set up favorably this year. I mean, it's from the gods. It's beautiful. You see Florida State at home, Georgia Tech at home. With yeah, a bye week guys. to prepare for the triple option, what about, by the way. what about that one right there? I think I, I think that's, that's, that's the sneaky one. That's the game they could Clemson at, right there. Nobody, Reese Davis? What? Nobody where? Nobody what? Walks into the no, snake Nobody pit. just strolls into the snake pit of Bird Stadium, rolls out their hat, and waltzes out with a victory. And it's right after that big game against Florida State at home. So that's one of those potential letdown games you got to watch what's, out what's for. What's the word you, you want to use? Uh, Clemson. Clemson. <laughs> <laughs> Clemson. <laughs> Clemson. <laughs> I'm just saying it could Clemson happen. Clemson fans, he's just got no I'm respect just, for Vic Beasley. I've got, got a ton, got Beasley a ton on of you. respect. This is a guy who has earned some respect tonight, really the last two years against North Carolina State. Time for our Wrangler five-star player of the game, and it is Clemson defensive end. Vic Beasley had three sacks, knocked down a couple of passes, forced a fumble. Taj Boyd will move the sticks and get the first down. You know, it's Thursday night, and... Things tend to get a little weird sometimes on Thursday night, and we've had some weird things. You have a look at our Wrangler five-star player of the game. What a performance by Beasley. Showed the whole arsenal. We had, uh, we had Brian Underwood twice having long jet sweeps. It is a full moon. Call back one of them, an 83-yard touchdown on a phantom step out of bounds. We just had NC State put together a 23-play touchdown drive, which is just three plays short of the longest drive in terms of number of plays in NCAA history, at least in FBS history. Navy had a 26-play drive in the Emerald Bowl against New Mexico a few years back, 2004. So things got things got a little weird at times for Clemson, but the Tigers are going to get out here with a victory. I love when things get weird. <laughs> that's when I, that's when I thrive. <laughs> right in your wheelhouse. There's Pete Thomas. And this offense will be his for the foreseeable future. They do hope to get Brandon Mitchell back at some point this year after suffering a broken foot 
early in the season opening victory against Louisiana Tech. Want to remind you, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series goes to New Hampshire this week. It's the chase for the cup. Matt Kenseth won the first race in the chase last week. And when you get to New Hampshire, it can get weird there, too. 11 different winners in the previous 11 races at this track. You can see at 1 o'clock Eastern time on Sunday. If you're out and about, want to take the iPad with you, you can watch it and watch ESPN app. And as soon as we're done, you can see Sports Center, which is already underway on ESPN News. North Carolina State has one timeout left. DJ Howard. First down, Howard inside the 30. Down to the 25. And Clemson will maintain possession with a two point or a 12 point lead. Some are really hoping they can turn this into points in the waiting moments. Going down inside two minutes. You're right, though. I don't give Boyd the ball again. No, I let everybody else carry it. Yeah, he's your most valuable commodity. He's the, one, he's the one guy you can't afford to lose. No. Although, I tell you what, against South Carolina State, I don't care if you're in a seven on seven drill. Cole Stout, the backup, hit 19 out of 20 <laughs> passes to set a Clemson record, but your Heisman candidate, you got to protect. And they will. Now we're Here's the 25. You know, North Carolina State trying to build a little bond between new quarterbacks. Sammy Watkins came over and gave battle a little earful, too. So second and 25. Clemson trying to run out the clock. DJ Howard. Howard. Side the 30. As we get down toward a minute to go, Pete Thomas, the transfer from Colorado State, stepping in for Brandon Mitchell, wants to make sure that he has a bond with his offensive line. So. Tuesday night, he took his lineman oh. out for chicken wings, and Pete said they, they ate 120 wings. That's the entire line. When David Pollock was, was chubbier <laughs> back in the day in <laughs> high school, so you ate 118 wings by yourself? Pollock, Pollock, if I put this number up, is that is that the weight and then that picture? Yeah, that's, above, within, two, that's, above? that's within two pounds. <laughs> 292. 292. I did. I had 118. Oh, that's so bad. You ate 118 in one sitting. One you know, sitting. You know, Pollock told me yesterday he's never full. Even now, after he's lost all the weight, he's always hungry. You're all, like, That's why you eat small meals all throughout the day because you, yeah. you can always eat. I can always eat. That's yeah. That's why I do the small meals and spread it out. <laughs> never eat. Never eat a lot at one time because you're always hungry. Each that, that, individually, that, that, each that, that, of the wings was a small meal. Yeah, right. <laughs> 118 <laughs> small so meals. It, and it didn't slow you down because that guy in the photo you just saw at 292 was a terror coming off the edge. He wasn't doing anybody any favors on the offensive line. Is that me? <laughs> you never know. Wings could be in the future of those three friends who've enjoyed the game tonight once they get the paint off. I don't know why our director Mike Roy would want to tempt me in that way when he <laughs> that shot up. <laughs> oh, well, half minute to go here, and he'll turn the ball over on downs, and North Carolina State will get it to see. And uh, you know, if uh, they can tack one on, perhaps, uh, uh, and see what they do. A win is a win for Clemson. And this oh, obviously well, something nice to say about Clemson. This, That's good, Jesse. I, I'm a huge fan of Clemson. And this wasn't the performance they probably had hoped for. They did what they needed to do, made the adjustments in the second half offensively, defensively. Not an easy place to come play and get the victory. Big Beasley trying to add to his stat total. He's not down here. Yeah. Pete Thomas completed it out to Underwood. There's Beasley, North Carolina State, going to try to get some more. Competing to the very end, hoping to... Use this type of execution when it might be more meaningful. And Vic, Vic's after it. And Thomas will slide down. Clock will stop long enough to move the chains on first down. He's trying to have one of those Derek Thomas games. You know, those like six, seven, eight yeah. sack games. Okay. There will be one more play in this one, so we'll get a chance to see Pete Thomas's arm strength. Never complain with opportunities to get more sacks. You never know when they're going to come, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep flying in there. Oh, he's going to get a lot more this year. That is for sure. Third straight year, Clemson's going to start 3 0. That hasn't happened since the late 20s. Thomas going to heave one up down the sideline, and it oh. is 
speaking instead. Helper's intercepted. Sean Breland will finish this off with an interception, and the Tigers come to Raleigh, a place that has been very difficult for highly ranked opponents in recent years, and they get the 26-14 victory. Sports Center's right around the corner. Latest on Texas interest in Nick Saban, according to a report. Much more on the baseball races as we come down the stretch. 26-14, Clemson beats North Carolina State. For our entire ESPN crew, I'm Reese Davis saying good night, and Sports Center is now.